If you're looking for a complete how to build a WordPress website for a beginners tutorial to build a fully functional professional WordPress website at absolutely no cost to you, then you've come to the right place. There was something else. Oh, at the end of this video, I'm going to discuss the four biggest mistakes people make that drastically hurt your search engine placement. Turns out the solutions for these four things are really easy and they're free. I'm Bethany and I love to travel. Right now, I'm at Couples Tower Isle Resort in Ocho Rios, Jamaica, one of my favorite travel spots. I recently got the idea to make a WordPress website so I could share my travel experiences and give advice to people who are new to traveling abroad. I wanted my website to be mobile friendly, easy to navigate, and simple for me to update. It turned out so well that my husband and I decided to make a tutorial to show others how to use WordPress. I hope you enjoy making your website as much as I had fun making mine. Thanks, Bethany. Hello, I'm Yoda. Welcome to my remote office, San Susi Resort, Ocherias, Jamaica. In this WordPress tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a WordPress website with easy to follow steps, no hidden cost, in less than two hours of your time. This video will use all the current web design and web development techniques to create a fully responsive website that will automatically adjust to meet the screen needs of any type of computer, laptop, tablet, phone, or any other handheld device. I think we're ready to get started, so without further delay, let's go ahead and visit Bethany's new website, yourultimatevacation.com, which is the website we're going to build today. Now her website starts out displaying a YouTube video, and basically we're going to be able to embed that into your website. Now initially you see this and you can already feel a little overwhelmed. It's like, wow, look at all this complicated stuff. But the truth is the software we're going to use is going to do all the complicated stuff. All we have to do is tell it what to do. Now to start with, Bethany's going to have a logo at the top left corner. We're going to learn how to make this logo for free online. We'll then learn how to find free video content that you can insert into your website. And then we'll learn how to insert that video content into your website. Now as we scroll down, notice how the content animates in until it gets to its final destination. I'll show you how to do this animation yourself. It's actually very simple. We'll learn how to insert pictures into your website. We'll learn how to add text and change the size and the color. We'll learn how to make these little wave dividers. There's actually lots of different dividers to choose from. This is just the one we chose. We'll learn how to do call to action areas. Notice how the icon pops out and the button pops out. We can control the colors of all this and the size and everything about it. Change the icon as well. We'll learn how to do these accordion lists where we could basically do any kind of frequently asked questions we want to do. Notice how you click on the different sections and it brings it up. Now you're not actually doing any of the coding to make this happen. All you're doing is providing the content. The software we're going to use is going to do all the real work. We'll learn how to do a photo carousel. Notice you can force it to go to the right or the left, or if you let it sit long enough, it'll just scroll on its own. Notice in the testimonial section how the animation brings the content in nicely. We'll learn how to make this testimonial section with images and the different text sizes. We'll be able to control all this to whatever you need it to be. When we go to build this, you'll see that there's plenty of options to make this exactly what you want it to be. You have total control at that level. Then we're going to do this parallax background. Notice how the image slides up and down inside of the window. Then we'll learn how to add this floating box on top with a join our email list inside of it. We'll show you how to make the two fields that are required. And we'll also show you how to make the send button go exactly to who you want it to go to. At the very bottom, we have a footer. It has four separate sections. You don't have to use all four sections, but I generally do. You have complete control of the content that goes in your footer. Notice that column four has complete navigation that can take you anywhere from here. Or you can hit the button at the bottom right, which takes you all the way to the top of the website. Then we'll build her About Us page. And on the About Us page in the header is this other logo. We're going to learn how to make that. Now also we'll learn how to put this movie in the header at the top. Now this could also just be a graphic or an image. We have full control over that. Here's another two column section that has some text to the left and image to the right. 
And then under destinations, you'll see that destinations is not clickable. We'll learn how to make that not clickable. I mean, it could be clickable, but we're going to learn how to make it not clickable. And then we're going to build individual pages under that. For example, the Destinations Jamaica page, which is definitely one of our favorite destinations. We're going to learn how to make this really nice header. In fact, if I turn around where I'm sitting right now, that's exactly the view I have. It's just unbelievable how beautiful it is here. Definitely one of my favorite places in the world to develop is right here at Sanssouci Resort Ocho Rios, Jamaica. If we scroll down, you'll notice these little progress bars. We'll learn how to make these and have complete control over those. It's basically a status bar where you control the text and the percentage. We'll also learn how to make these buttons that allow you to jump down to a particular place in the page. For example, if we scroll down to things to do, you can see that takes quite a while to get there. But if I click on the button, it takes me right there immediately. We'll learn how to make these pictures go all the way to the edge like this. We'll also learn how to put the text in the boxes and how to control the spacing around them. And we'll go back up to the top. We'll learn how to make a gallery. And one of the things this gallery has is called a light box. And a light box, all that means is when you click on an image, it brings it up in a highlighted box. And then you can click to the right or the left from here. Notice when we close that picture, it doesn't matter which picture you click on, it'll start rotating from that point. Again, you're not doing any of the mechanics of this. You're simply going to drag a photo gallery in, tell it which pictures you want to do, and it's going to do all the work for you. That's what's really incredible about this product. It really does all the work. All we do is tell it what to do. Then we're going to build a travel tips page, which includes all the travel tips that Bethany's collected over the years. Just an incredible list of helpful tools for people who want to travel abroad. Our goal, of course, is to build the page. And notice it has all these really cool accordion pull downs, and all we did was provide the content. It did the work for us. And then finally, we'll build a Contact Us page. And on the Contact Us page, we'll learn how to do these separate sections. Again, these can be ordered however you want. This is just one example of how it can be done. So you can have phone, email, and address. The phone will be clickable. The email could be clickable, but we try to encourage people to use the message us form, so we made it not clickable here. And then we'll show you how to make the name, email, and phone fields required, whereas the subject and the your message fields are not required. And we'll show you how to make the send button go exactly where you want it to go. And we'll learn how to insert a Google map into your website. Notice how the map can be moved around. It can be zoomed in, it can be zoomed out. And we should be able to complete the actual construction of the website itself in a little less than two hours. Now all professional websites have certain intrinsic costs you simply can't avoid. For example, you're going to need quality website hosting, and that's going to run you about $10 a month. And you're also going to need a domain name. That's how you access your website, and that runs about $12 a year. I'm going to show you where I get these services from at a discount promotional rate. But if you choose to purchase your web hosting somewhere else and your domain somewhere else, this course will work just fine. But outside of those costs, that's it. There's no extra cost to follow. If you're concerned you're going to run into troubles while taking the course, don't. I've been a webmaster instructor, a.k.a. the Web Yoda, for over 20 years, and I'd love to hear from my students. So as you work your way through this course, feel free to express your comments, suggestions, and questions below the video. If you have any troubles, just ask. I'll be more than happy to assist you. But in exchange, please pay it forward. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the video, tell your friends about the video. It's the best way for me to get the word out there to help as many students like yourself as possible. So we're ready to start on our website, but before we can build a website, we have to have a place for our website to live. And that's what web hosting does for you. Otherwise, you'd build a website on your local computer, but only you'd be able to see it. You want to be able to have the world see it, so you have to get hosting so everybody else can see your results. The next question is, who are you going to get hosting from? Because obviously there's a lot of choices out there. So let's go ahead and dive into the web hosting matrix to learn more about why HostGator is the best web hosting solution for me. Finding great web hosting solutions in the matrix of hundreds of choices can be frustrating at best. You have to understand that nearly all web hosting review sites make sure that the web hosting company they are affiliated with always get the best review. So basically that web hosting company is number one to them because they get paid if you decide to use that company. I have been hosting websites for over 30 years with the first five years being me supplying my own hosting. I have used at least 10 of the hosting companies shown here either personally or for my clients. Obviously not all web hosting companies are created equal and there are only a few that stand out from the rest. But how do you reveal the best web hosting provider with all the fake reviews out there? As puzzling as this might sound, I was able to find my answer while not allowing my own bias to interfere. For me, I like to turn problems inside out. In this case, I was looking for the web hosting review that reveals a web hosting company that sucks the least. So first, the quick answer to the question of who is the best web hosting company for me is simple. Hands down, it's HostGator. 
HostGator is definitely the best web hosting solution for me, my clients, and for WebYoda. But the obvious next question is, why is HostGator the best choice? Well, WebYoda did some research to try to find some authentic web hosting reviews, and they settled on some results from PC Magazine. You have to understand that PC Magazine has been around for nearly 40 years providing essential technology information to the end user. For our purposes, every year PC Magazine does an Editor's Choice Award to determine the best web hosting companies. And shown here are the top six web hosting companies for this year, with HostGator being number one. It turns out that HostGator has been rated the number one web hosting provider by PC Magazine for many years running. Basically, HostGator collectively has the features you need. Their server reliability is amazing, their 24-7 support is amazing, their prices are good or better than anybody out there. I've personally been using HostGator for more than three years now. I host over 200 domains and websites with them. WebYoda also decided to go with HostGator for all their needs. In fact, WebYoda partnered with HostGator, and as part of that partnership, WebYoda students receive up to 75% off plus a free domain name. Now for you to take advantage of this offer, you simply need to go to your browser and type in HostGator.com front slash WebYoda. Now this takes you to the partner page for HostGator and WebYoda, and it reveals our three choices for hosting plans. Currently as part of this partnership, HostGator is going to offer us a free domain name provided we sign up for one of their annual plans, and it turns out this is actually the most affordable choice for us. If we scroll down, we can reveal the pricing for each of the plans. All three of the plans come with one-click installs. So that means when we go to install the software, it's going to allow us to build our website. We can just click a link and it'll install everything for us. They also come with unmetered bandwidth, which means we don't pay for the traffic that comes to our website, no matter how small or large that might be. And finally, they also come with a free SSL certificate, which typically runs around $99 a year. And you say, okay, what is that? What do I need that for? Well, that's that little lock up here in the top left. It allows your page to be secure so that the information going to and from your website is secure. At this point, you need to decide which one of the plans is best for you. For our purposes, I'd recommend the hatching plan if you have one domain, or the baby plan if you plan on building multiple websites. And then if later you find you need additional features, you can just upgrade to the business plan and pay the difference. So in your case, you probably need the hatching plan, which is just a single domain, so we'll choose that. The first step is to pick a domain name that works best for your purposes. In my case, for this example, I'm going to use choose my domain name and if we click to the right it'll tell us if it is available and in our case it is available so we're going to scroll down the next item is domain privacy protection and basically what they'll do is for fourteen dollars and ninety five cent a year they'll hide your name your address your information like your email and stuff like that from people being able to see it now for me it's going to be on the website anyway so i don't feel like i'm giving anything away so i'm not going to choose to pay for that Next, we already picked our package type. We chose the hatching plan because we only have one domain. So we want to look at our billing cycle. Within the billing cycle, if you purchase one month, it's $5.48, but it's only for that first month, and then the price goes up. If you go all the way up to 36 months, it's going to be $2.71, and it's going to be 61% off. Now, to get the free domain, you're going to have to pick 12 months, 24 months, or 36 months. So let's go ahead and pick the 12 months. It says $76.40, but let's see if we can do a little bit better than that. Now we're going to pick a username. In my case, I'm going to pick Admin Yoda and a security pin. Then we want to put in our billing information. Now we'll scroll down to Additional Services. Now we don't need any of these services, but I'll explain them real quickly. The first is an SSL certificate. We already get that for free, so we don't need to add that. The second is for them to protect us from hackers. I know firsthand they're going to give you protection whether you ask for it or not, so there's no reason to pay for this additional thing. They're going to want to protect their servers from both the Internet and from you, so they're going to definitely stay on top of this. Next, we don't need to pay for an email for our domain name. I'm going to show you how to make an email forward for your domain at no cost at all. Next, they offer a backup service where it'll do daily backups, but I know firsthand they do monthly backups for you. I'll go ahead and give you a video that'll show you how to make your own backups without having to pay them a regular fee like that. If you're looking to make scheduled automated backups of your WordPress website where you're in full control, as well as make manual backups at any time that you can store locally on your own computer, then you'll want to check out my WordPress backup and restore video at some point. We'll turn that off. And finally, HostGator offers some SEO tools for nearly $3 a month, but there's plenty of free tools out there, so we're not going to worry about that. If we scroll down, you want to make sure the WebYoda coupon code automatically spawned in here so you get the best possible price. And we look down and we see that now we're at $33, which is really a great deal. That's going to be for the whole year. It also includes our free domain name at no cost to us. And that comes with 24-7, 365 support, instant activation of our account, money back guarantee, which is awesome, 45 days. Collectively, all these features leave me feeling very confident that I'm making the right decision today. So we're going to scroll down, 
We need to agree to their terms. And now we're ready to check out. But in my case, I own the domain I'm going to use, so I'm going to do one last thing at the top. So I'll scroll to the top, and I'm going to choose I already own this domain. And I'm going to change this to say, choose your domain name.com. That's the one I own. So now we go back down to the bottom, and we're ready to check out now. And my purchase is complete. It is now setting up my account. Once our HostGator hosting account is complete and ready to go, you're likely to get a survey that looks like this one. But at this point, we're going to go ahead and go off script and save ourselves a lot of time and a lot of questions. If you didn't have this video to follow, obviously following these steps would probably get you to the goal that you wanted to do, but we're going to be able to get there faster and easier. We're ready to set up our email forward and install WordPress. So to proceed, you're going to go ahead and head to your email, and you want to look for an email from HostGator.com that says your account info at the top. From my experience, there are two different versions of emails you might receive from HostGator that will contain the information you need to proceed. So now we'll discuss both of those email versions to minimize confusion. Of course, HostGator could change things at any time, but what you learn here should be enough to allow you to proceed. The first email type will look something like the one you see here, whereas the second email will look more like this one. If you selected a free domain name from HostGator as part of your purchase, then this short section on how to point your domain name to your hosting account will not apply to you as your domain was automatically set up for you by HostGator. To point your domain name to your hosting, you first need to know what your name servers are for your hosting account. In the first email example, your name servers are shown here as I've selected. In the second email version, you can also easily find your name servers as shown here. Please do not use the name servers shown in this example, as those are the name servers for my hosting, and your name servers shown in your email will most likely be different than mine. Once you have located your name servers, you need to log into your domain account and set your DNS settings to use your name servers. All of my domain names live at GoDaddy.com, so I needed to go into the DNS at my GoDaddy account and point that domain to the HostGator name servers as shown here. Now, if you're not using GoDaddy.com, it should be a similar process, and if you have any trouble, just contact your domain company and they can give you further assistance. Next, we're going to log into our control panel. And since there are two possible emails you might receive, that means there's two possible ways to log into your control panel to access your hosting account. Let's start by looking at the first method. To log into our hosting account, we're going to need our username and we're going to need a password. We're going to take that password and we're going to copy it to the clipboard. And now you want to go to the control panel, which is how you access your hosting space. So we'll click on this link, and that takes us to the control panel login page. Now my username and password are already there, so I can just choose login. And that takes you to your HostGator control panel, also known as your cPanel. In the second method for logging into your control panel, you will simply click the Go to HostGator button found in your email. And this will take you to the URL porthole.hostgator.com front slash login. From here, you will enter your username and password that you provided when you purchased your hosting. Now, my username and password are already there, so I can just choose login. Once you're successfully logged into your HostGator portal, there'll be an option at the bottom right to access your control panel. Simply click on the cPanel button to access your control panel. And that takes you to your HostGator control panel, also known as your cPanel. Now, as promised, I wanted to quickly show you how to create an email forward. Now, you can notice right here, you can find it in Tools. Unfortunately, the cPanel changes on a regular basis, so I want to show you a more effective way to make sure you can find it no matter what your cPanel looks like. So we're going to go into the search box, and let's just type forward. And there's the option we're looking for. So we can click on that. Now we're at the email forwards. Now I'm going to click on Add Forwarder. Then I want to put the email address I want to forward. In this case, it'll be Yoda. Now we need to choose our domain. In most cases, you'll just have one domain name, but I have a lot of domain names in here. So there's the domain name I want to use. Now what email address do I want it to forward to? Yoda at webyoda.com. I can choose Add Forwarder. Now, any email that goes to yoda at chooseyourdomainname.com will be sent to yoda at webyoda.com. Now, obviously, this will be your domain name and your forward, and this will be your email address that you want it to forward to. Now, let's go ahead and go back to the cPanel by clicking here. Now, we're ready to install WordPress. And again, the easiest way to find the WordPress installer is to use a search box. So I'm going to go to the search box, and I'm going to type the word soft because the installer we're going to use is called Softasculus. 
I'm going to choose Softasculus Apps Installer. Now in the search box on the left, I'm just going to type WordPress. There's WordPress. I click on that, and now I'm at the WordPress installer. Now before we proceed with our WordPress installation, I wanted to address how to deal with WordPress installation errors. In very rare occasions, when you're trying to install WordPress, you may get an error. I've already installed WordPress so that I can demonstrate that error, then I can show you how to correct the error, then we'll install WordPress correctly. So let's go ahead and click on Install Now like we think this is going to work. And don't worry about the settings right now, we'll worry about that next time through. And now I'm going to click on Install at the bottom. It starts the install, and then it gives you an error. Now in this case it's just telling me it already exists, but this error could be any error where something went wrong. Our goal is to get rid of the install error so we can reinstall correctly. To get started, click on Softasculus at the top left. And right here is a list of our installations. If I click on that, it shows the one installation we had. We know that we don't want it because it didn't work. So we can simply click this X. We can scroll to the bottom. Remove installation. Are you sure? Yes, we're sure. That installation has now been removed. And now we're ready to install WordPress. So at this point, we can go back to Softasculus, choose WordPress, and now we're back to the installer. And we'll click on Install Now. And we'll go ahead and proceed to install our WordPress. The first option is which version do you want to use? The default will be the latest version. We'll use that. Next, you'll choose your domain. If you have multiple domains, they'll be in that drop down. Now, over here, it says what protocol do we want to use? The problem is it can take a little while for the secure key to be activated. So we're going to go ahead and turn this off for now. We can activate it later. So we'll just choose the regular one like that. And it shows that currently our SSL certificate was not found, and that's because it takes HostGator about 24 hours to get that up and running. Under Site Settings, the site name is the company name. So let's say this was for Web Yoda. I'd put Web Yoda. And then the description is whatever the description for the company is. So let's say I put free online courses. You can leave this unchecked. We want to pick a username and a password. I'm going to pick Yoda user. Then you want to pick a secure password. So let's hide that so I can put a secure password in there. Now the admin email is where any email associated with your website will be sent. So for example, if you needed to reset your password, that's where it would go. Now since we didn't set up this email forward, that's not going to be good enough for us. So in my case, I'm going to pick one that does work. So for me, it's going to be yoda at webyoda.com. For you, it'll be whatever your regular email address is. You could choose a different language if you like. We don't need to select any plugins. We're going to do all that ourselves. No reason to make any adjustments to the advanced options. And no reason to select a theme now. We're going to do that ourselves as well. When the installation is complete, where do we want it to send details to? I'll use the same email address. And now I can click Install. This says that it could take three to four minutes. I found it doesn't take really that long at all. Now that WordPress has been successfully installed, we're ready to open up a new tab and look at our website. At this point, we're probably going to have to take a small break, and that's because we just set up a hosting account that has a new domain. The hosting's immediately available, but the domain takes a while to propagate across the internet so that it's able to be accessed. To test to see if your domain name's ready, simply open up a new tab in your browser and go to your domain name. And if your domain's not ready, you'll get a message that says this site cannot be reached. So you'll likely need to take a break for about two hours, and then come back again and go back to your domain and refresh and see if it works. When it's ready, you'll get a page that looks like this one that says Website Coming Soon, or you might get your new website homepage. So let's go ahead and close that Test tab. Now we're looking at our completed WordPress installation page again. Now that WordPress has been successfully installed, we're ready to open up a new tab and look at our website. To access our website, we simply go to our domain name and go to our website. Before you can start editing your website, you need to be able to access your website admin. To do that, you simply go to your domain name, front slash WP, Dash admin, hit enter. A login box will come up. Now simply enter the username and password you created during your WordPress installation. So in my case, Yoda user, password, paste that in, hit login. And now we're logged into our WordPress. But you're saying to yourself, hey Yoda, I see how you logged into the sample account, but how am I going to log into my own WordPress admin? I will show you. As an example, let's log into the WordPress admin for the website we're going to build today. Now, since Bethany's domain name is yourultimatevacation.com, we want to go to the URL 
yourultimatevacation.com front slash WP dash admin. In your case, you'd enter your domain name followed by front slash WP dash admin. So I'll go ahead and enter my username, Yoda user, and then I'll paste in the password I chose when I installed WordPress. You would simply use the username and password you chose when you installed your WordPress. At this point, we can click Login. And now we're looking at the dashboard for the WordPress admin for Bethany's new website. Now, when you see the WordPress admin come up for the first time, it can be very intimidating. You're like, oh my God, what have I got myself into? This looks really complicated. How am I going to build that website we looked at earlier using this stuff? But fear not, we're not going to be using any of this craziness. We're going to have a very simple way for you to do this. If you have any troubles at all, you'll just leave questions under the video. I'll answer and help you get you moving again. You can get through this, trust me. This little message here, we can just dismiss that. Now before we proceed, I want to go ahead and clean up our tabs a little bit. We no longer need this one, so we can close that one. We no longer need this one, so we can close that one. And now I want to open up a tab to the right that is the website we're going to build. And to do that, we're going to highlight right here. And then if we right click here, it brings up a menu where we can open up our website in a new tab. Now our website is here, so we can click on that. And as of now, you can see it's a whole lot of nothing. And now I want to open up a new tab over here to put Bethany's version of the website as our reference site. So I opened up a new tab, and now we'll go to her web address. Now we can go back to our dashboard. Now that we're ready to get started, I wanted to cover a couple of tips that will really help you out. First, some subscribers have pointed out that I tend to talk too fast. This is unavoidable as my processor runs a little faster like a child's processor, probably because I refuse to grow up. Fortunately, YouTube offers a feature to slow videos down to meet your needs. So for example, I'm going to go to this video in a new browser window. Now within the video, I'm going to choose the settings gear. I'm going to choose playback speed, 0.75. Now this is what 75% sounds like, which should probably meet your needs. Now I'll choose playback speed again. I'll choose normal, and we're back to normal speed. Next, I want to scroll down. And within the content under the video that I've provided, there's going to be an entire set of timestamps that allows you to pick any particular spot in the video to proceed. And finally, in most cases when I make a new how-to video, I make a script for that video so it makes it easier for me to create the video. And at some point when I was using a script in a previous video, a student pointed out that I should make that script available to everybody since it was very useful. Well, that was a great idea, so now I provide access to my script for all my new how-to videos. To access the script for this video, simply create a new tab in your browser, then go to webyoda.com front slash Y-U-V, which stands for Your Ultimate Vacation. And the last thing we want to do is download all the content I use within this website, so when you're following along, you can build the exact same website. So I'm going to open up another tab, and this time I'm going to go to webyoda.com front slash content, and now I'm going to scroll down to the project we're working on, and that was another way to get to the script. But we're going to click on this link here. And when it's done, on mine, I can click on that and show in a folder. And you see it's in my downloads folder. And then I can right click on the file. I can choose extract all. Click on extract. And now it makes a folder containing all the content I need opens it up in a new window. So I can close that one. So now you have access to all the images, all the content, and all the templates that are used to create this website. Now admittedly, I'm no Bob Ross, but I definitely do my best to keep things fun and easy. I hope that the tips I just provided you will ensure your experience building your website will be met with confidence and enjoyment. Now that our WordPress is completely installed, there's a few other things we need to install to get everything ready for us to work on our real website. The first of those is called a theme. So we're going to click on Appearance and Themes. And then we're going to be adding a new theme. But first we need to do is download the theme we're going to use. And so we're going to make a new tab in our browser. And then we're going to go to webyoda.com front slash themes. 
and this brings up the themes page on the WebJetta website. And now we're just going to scroll down to the project we're working on, in this case, yourultimatevacation.com. And the theme for this website is Ocean WP theme. So we're going to click on that, and it will download it to our downloads folder. And each time I do a download like that, mine automatically brings up a window like this. Yours may not. And I can click close on that. And now I'm ready to upload our new theme. And to do that, we can go ahead and close this tab. We're going to go back to WP Admin. And at the top of themes, there's an Add New button. We clicked on that. And now we're going to click on the button that shows up in the same spot, Upload Theme. And we're going to choose a file on our local computer. In this case, it's in my download folder, and it's called OceanWP.zip. I click on Open. And now I'll click on Install. And it will install that theme. And once the theme is installed, you make sure that you click on Activate, which is right here. And that makes it the active theme that you're going to use for your website. Now, oftentimes when you do an install of the theme, it's possible that they've made updates to it, which they do fairly regular, and you'll see an update button. If you see one, just click on the update button, and it'll give you the latest version of that. Now, there's one last thing we need to install before we can actually start building our website, and that item is plugins. Now, plugins are the tools that are going to allow us to build our website. Much like a contractor has tools to build a house, WordPress uses plugins to build websites. So on the left-hand side, we can click on the word plugins. Now, inside of plugins, there's going to be a list of all the plugins that come by default within your WordPress environment. But these plugins are for somebody else's website, not for ours. So our first step will be to delete all of these WordPress plugins, and then we'll proceed to install the plugins we'll use with our website. To delete plugins, you first have to deactivate them. And on the left-hand side, you'll see a box that says Bulk Actions. If you do the pull-down, you can choose Deactivate. And just below that is a box you can click called Plugin that will allow you to select all the plugins at once. Now we're going to click Apply. At this point, it's going to deactivate each one of them. Now they're deactivated. At this point, we can go to the Bulk Actions option again. We can choose Delete. We can choose our Plugin button to select them all again. And then we click Apply. Click OK. Yes, we really want to do this. And we watch one by one as they get deleted and clean up our environment. So now all the plugins are deleted, and we're ready to start installing our own plugins. To install our plugins, we first have to download them to our local computer, then we can upload them into our WordPress environment. To do that, we're going to make a new tab in our browser. We're going to go to webyoder.com, front slash plugins. Now on this page, scroll down to the project we're going to be doing. In this case, yourultimatevacation.com. And one by one, we're going to click on each of the plugins to download them to our computer. First plugin we're going to download is Elementor. And this is the page building plugin that's going to allow us to build our amazing website today. Every time I download a plugin, I get one of these pop-up boxes. And I don't need all these, so I'm going to close these as I go along. The second plugin is Contact Form 7. Now, Contact Form 7 is the most popular contact form plugin for WordPress. It allows us to build the contact forms where we can send information from our website to us from the users. The third is CF7 Elementor, and this allows the Contact Form 7 to work inside the Elementor environment. The fourth is Ocean WP Extra, and these are extra plugins that work well with the theme that we installed. And the final one is the Duplicate Page plugin. And this thing is amazing. It allows you to take, for example, the destinations to make a page and make a copy of it and call it a Hawaii page, and then we can just change the content to be the new page we need. So during post-production of this video, WordPress made some updates and changes that made the video no longer in sync with WordPress. This turns out to be the case for just about every video out there. But to compensate for that, it's possible to add two additional plugins that'll ensure that your experience on your computer matches what you see in the video. So while you're installing the plugins that we've already discussed, you're also going to want to install the Classic Editor plugin, as well as the Classic Widget plugin, which will help ensure that what you see in your WordPress matches the video as close as possible. Now that we've downloaded all our plugins, it's time to start installing our plugins. We're going to go back to WP Admin, and from here we're inside our plugins, and at the top we're going to click on Add New. 
At this point, click on Upload Plugins, choose File, and just go to your Downloads folder. That's where they should be at. We'll start with the one at the top, Duplicate Page. We'll click on Open, Install Now. And once it's installed, you need to click Activate Plugin. Once that's complete, we'll click on Add New again. Upload Plugin. Choose a file. Ocean WP. Install Now. Activate Plugin. And three more to go. Click on Add New. Upload Plugin. Choose File. Pick our third one. Install Now. Activate Plugin. Add New. Upload Plugin. Choose File. Pick our fourth one. Open. Install Now. Activate Plugin. And we have one more. The Biggie. Elementor. You're going to love it. Add New. Upload Plugin. Choose File. Elementor. Open. Install Now. And Activate Plugin. And we are officially ready to start working on our website. Now Elementor is going to come with a brief overview, but you don't need that. You have me, so we can close this out. You're also going to want to install the Classic Editor plugin, as well as the Classic Widget plugin, which will help ensure that what you see in your WordPress matches the video as close as possible. And there's one last thing I wanted to bring up. If you notice near the top left there it says Updates to, and lower down it says Plugins to. Basically that's telling us there's some updates that can be done. And if you click on whatever the item is, in this case Plugins, you scroll down, you can hit Update Now next to each one of these. And this makes sure you're running the most up-to-date versions. You'll notice that even though we just installed WordPress, there's a message here at the top that says that there's available for a new update. Now this is likely because the default installed version was not necessarily the most up-to-date, and now there's a newer version available. Well, that's good because now we can learn how to update our WordPress. Now to update WordPress, basically when you log in to your dashboard, you'll see a message like this. And if that message shows up, all you need to do is go ahead and click to update now. So we'll click on update now. And at the top of the WordPress updates page, there's an important notice to back up your database and files. Now if this is a new WordPress environment where you haven't built anything yet, you don't need to worry about the backup. But if you've got your website already up and running, you're looking to update your WordPress you'll want to back those up. Now we already have a video for backing up your database and files called How to Back Up Your WordPress and it's using a product called Backup Buddy and use that video to see how to do automated and manual backup so that you can go ahead and do that before you would proceed. At this time we're going to go ahead and click on Update Now and this starts the update process for the WordPress. Now the update's complete, and it usually doesn't take too long, but it could take a little bit longer. It just depends on circumstances. And from here, we can just click on Dashboard to get back where we were at before we started the update. Now one of the things you'll quickly notice when you're working on your website is that the dashboard will change regularly. For example, what you're seeing right now in the dashboard is what it looked like before we installed our plugins, and it's just information about what's going on currently with WordPress, and a lot of times it's advertisement for things that you have installed, or advertisement for things they might want you to install. Now once we installed our theme and our plugins, you'll notice that this is what the dashboard looked like, and it has information about our new theme, and it has information about our mentor and things that are going on. And these little windows are movable, so they might be useful for you and give you information about what's going on and things like that. But many times things will come up, like this little piece at the top. It's just an advertisement. They're recommending something, but we're not going to be using that. So we can close those little advertisements out like that. Okay, our first step in building our website is to create some pages. To do that, we're going to click on Pages on the left-hand side. And first, we'll go ahead and delete the pages that are there. These are just sample pages. We don't need those. 
I can choose those. Bulk actions. Move to trash. Apply. And now we have no pages. Now to add our first page, we're going to click on Add New. And from here, we don't need this little box. It's not going to be helpful. We're going to set a couple of defaults. The reason why we're going to do that is so once we've finished our first empty page, we can copy it, and the defaults for all the new empty pages will already be set. So first, let's set a title for the page. Since this is our first page, we'll call it Home. Next, you'll need to find the section in this page called Ocean WP Settings, which in our case is directly below within the same screen. However, some users have found they needed to scroll down some to get to the Ocean WP settings. And from here, locate the Content Layout option. And then under Content Layout, we're going to use 100% Full Width. And finally, under Title, we're going to set the title to be Disabled. And these are just the defaults that are going to work for the site we need to build. So now at the top right, we'll click Publish. And click Publish again. And now our page is complete, and if we go back to Pages, we'll see that it's listed as our first page that's available. Now there's one more default I want to set on our initial page. So if you highlight the name of the page, it comes up with these extra options, and we're going to choose the option Quick Edit. In here, there's a template, and we're going to choose Elementor Full Width, because that's the one we're going to be using for this course. Now we can click on Update, and our first default page is complete. So to copy this page, if we put our mouse over the home name again, this menu comes up, and the right is duplicate this. That's how you duplicate one. But how many duplicates do we need? Let's go back up to Bethany's site, and we have our home. We need one, two, three, four, five empty pages. So we'll come back over to our WordPress admin, and we're going to make five empty pages. So first, if we highlight home, we see duplicate this. We'll click on that. And now we have one copy. Click duplicate this again. And now we have two copies, three copies, four copies, and now five copies. So at this point, we just need to rename each of these to be the individual pages they're going to be. So if we hover over the name, we can choose Quick Edit. And the first page is going to be About. So we'll put a title of About. And the slug name is basically the name of the page itself when you go to click on it. And we're going to make that lower case because the server is case sensitive. And now we can hit update. Now our second page name is going to be destinations. So we go into quick edit, title of destinations, and slug name of destinations, lower case. Update. Now we're ready for our third page. We click on quick edit, set the title of gallery, the slug name of gallery, lower case, and we click update. Now we're going to do the Travel Tips page. We click on Quick Update. So we're going to give it a title of Travel Tips, a slug name of Travel Tips with a lowercase t, a dash, and another lowercase t. And the reason why we like to use a lot of these words is if you're using keywords in your slug names, it makes the search engines like you better. So now we need to scroll down a little bit so we can see our Update button. We'll click on Update. And now we're ready to change our last one. So we hover over the name. Click on Quick Edit, Title of Contact, Slug Name Contact, lowercase. Scroll so we can see the word Update. And now all our individual pages have their own individual names. To edit the pages of our website requires us to access the Elementor plugin. And to do that, it's the same for all pages. First, you want to make sure you can see the list of your pages by clicking on Pages on the left. And then choose the page you want to edit. Let's say we want to edit the About page. So we clicked on the About, and at the very top there's a button that says Edit with Elementor. And we're going to click on that button. This loads our page in Elementor, and now we're ready to make edits. Now let's say we're done making edits, and we need to get back to the dashboard. You come to this hamburger icon, you click on that, and at the very bottom is Exit to Dashboard. Now when you go to Exit Elementor, depending on what version of Elementor you're running, you may get this message. All you want to do is click on the down arrow, Choose All Post and Apply. You'll probably need to update your page to save that change, and then you can exit Elementor. Now when you get ready to update your Elementor page for the first time, sometimes it doesn't say Update, it just says Publish. Once you've published it the first time, then the next time around it'll say Update. 
Now at this point we can go back to our pages and choose a different page to work on. Now notice that the About has Elementor next to it. That means it's in the Elementor mode. That also means when we go to edit it, if we click on it again, now instead I have an icon at the top, it has one right in the middle of the page, and we click on that icon going forward to make edits to that page. And if you're ready to work on another page, click on Pages and choose another page that you want to edit. You'll notice the link for the Destinations page is now changing to Destinations Jamaica. This is because the actual page is Destinations Jamaica, but the link at the top is Destinations that we'll need for the menu. Now before we start adding content to our pages, if we go back to Bethany's site, notice this menu across the top. We want to go ahead and build that menu before we do anything else. So let's go back to our dashboard. Now to add a menu, we need to go to Appearance and Menus. And in the box next to Menu Name, we're going to put Main Menu and Save Menu. Now we're going to pick all the pages that we just created and we're going to add them to Menu. Then we'll scroll down and under Custom Links we'll add another menu item, Destinations, and we're going to use a pound sign as the URL for now. Click Add Menu. And now we have our menu, we need to organize it the way we're going to use it. So we wanted our Home button at the top, and then About, and then Destinations, and then Gallery, and then Travel Tips, then Contact, and then Destinations Jamaica is a sub-menu for Destinations, so we're going to bring it up here and then set it just to the right under Destinations. Now as a final step, we're going to go into this custom link, which is Destinations, and just take that out. And that's how you make it to where it's not clickable. So we can click on Save Menu, and now our menu is saved. And then at the bottom, we want to choose this to display as our main menu, and then we'll click on Save Menu again. And now if we go over to our website and we hit reload, you notice now we have a menu and each of these items is clickable and they take us to those default pages that we've made. So notice that Destinations is not clickable, but the pull down Destinations Jamaica is clickable. All the pages obviously look the same because they're empty right now. Within Bethany's website, she had a black menu bar with these lighter colors. Now it's not totally black and the letters aren't totally white. That makes it a little easier to read. Um, so to make that effect, we're going to go back to our WordPress admin, and under Appearance, this time we're going to choose Customize. And within Customize, we're going to choose Header, and so you may need to scroll down a little bit to see it. And inside a header, we're choosing General, and that's going to have the place where you're going to change your background color. Now if you click on Select Color, it comes up with this pad where you can basically move around and pick whatever color you want or choose from these different choices here and then move it around some more and decide what color you want. Now in our case, Bethany went to a lot of trouble to go ahead and make a lot of information for us. So for example, the titles and the slugs were there that she used in her website, as are the default colors that she used, all the logo colors and things like that. So for her, the menu, she wanted to have it black, but not totally black, and this color is a little less than black, and I'll show you how that works. We come back over here, if I pick black, notice it's all zeros, or if I pick white, it's all Fs. Well, all Fs is white, all zeros is black, and anything in between makes the number go up and down. Now for her, she picked a color that was almost black, and that way it has a little softer look to it. Now at that point, we need to change the letters now so we can actually see them again. So we'll go ahead and click on Publish to make that change to our site. And now I'm going to scroll back to the top, and then I'll hit the left arrow to take us back one menu. And now we're going to go into the menu options. And from here, we can make the change to the color. So notice here's the link color. So I'll go back to Bethany's document, and I'll pick the off-white that she chose as opposed to this full white. And when we go back in here, we can change this link color. Now notice if I pick white, it's really, really bright. But if I pick the one that she chose, it's a little less than white. It's a little easier on the eyes. And then I want to go back and pick her menu accent color, and I'll show you how that works. Notice this blue here. When you come over here, you can see that little line there. Well, if I change that to the color that she chose, it's this green, and then I come down, there's another place down here where you can change the same thing. Now, when we come over here, it'll have this nice little green accent on it. Now we want to go ahead and change the background and link color for the drop-down to match what they are up here. So we do that under the drop-down styling. 
we go into here to our background color and set it to the background color we used. And then we'll scroll down to the link color and use the color that she chose there. And now when we come back over here, you'll see that those things match up just fine. In Bethany's menu, this menu is to the left over here. So if we scroll to the top, here's our option, position, left, center, right. We'll choose left, and we'll choose publish. And now the only thing left is to add our logo to replace this text, so we'll do that next. Now I'll go back to the WordPress dashboard by clicking the X at the top left. To add a logo to the menu bar, you're going to go under Appearance, and then you're going to choose Customize, you're going to choose Header, and then you're going to choose Logo. Now we're going to do Select Logo. We currently don't have a logo in here, so we're going to do Select Files. We're going to choose our Logo Dash Menu, hit Open, hit Select, and we're just going to skip cropping because we want to use the full thing. And it's going to fill in right here, and whoa, it's really big, so we're going to have to make some updates to that. But down here, we've got the width and height that we can set, so let's just try 200, 200 first. And that actually looks pretty good, but I think I'm going to make it just a tiny bit bigger on both of these, so that the your and the dot com look a little bit bigger. And I think that's good, so we're going to go ahead and click on Publish. And we'll come back over to our website, and let's hit Reload. And look at there, we're making progress. But you're saying to yourself, but you don't have a logo. What do I do? I will tell you. If you're looking to make a professional logo for your website online at no cost to you in about five minutes' time, then you'll want to check out my Make a Free Logo video at some point. Now we're going to go ahead and add our favicon icon. That's the little icon that'll go right here. So we're going to go ahead and go back to our WordPress admin. And again, for the sake of being thorough, we're going to go back to the dashboard. And from here, you're going to go to Appearance, Customize, Site Identity, and then down here, we're going to select Image. And we currently don't have the image uploaded yet, so we're going to do Upload Files, Select Files, pick our Logo Transparent, our real big fancy one, click Open. Now we'll click Select and it is the correct cropping already so we'll say crop to image now the favicon has been added and we can click publish and now if we go up here and reload it should show up and it did well done now one of the things we need to do is define our home page we have a home button and that does take us to the page that would be our home page but the main home page is going to be whatever it is when you come into here which is just your URL by itself, and this is a page that isn't going to exist in our site. To set our home page, we're going to go back to our WordPress admin, and again, for the sake of being thorough, we're going to start at the dashboard. Under Appearance, we're going to pick Customize. Then we're going to choose Home Page Settings, and now we're going to choose Static Page, and for our home page, we'll pick Home. Now we can hit Publish. And now we come back over here, and we hit the logo again. And that shows that it comes back with our empty page. It no longer shows that default page from before. So we have now updated our home page. So if you notice, when we click on one of our pages, the names of these pages have index.php inside of the name. And what we want to do is we want to change our naming convention. And to do that, we're going to go back to our WordPress. Go back to the dashboard, and from the dashboard, we're going to go to Settings, and then we're going to click on Permalinks. And this is the different types of naming conventions. The most popular is called Postname, and the reason is, is basically it's your URL and whatever you gave your slug name to be. It's clean, and it's helpful for the search engine, so that's the one we want to use. So now we can scroll down, hit Save Changes, now if we come back to our website and we reload, the About Us page just comes with the word About. Okay, so now it's working correctly. Now not all websites can benefit from a search option. For example, Bethany's website, um, the navigation itself, should get you to just about everything you need. So we're going to go ahead and remove the search option from her website. To do that, we're going to go back to our WordPress admin. 
and under Appearance from the dashboard, we're going to go to Customize. Then we're going to go to Header, Menu, and then we're going to scroll down until we see the option that has to do with the search box. Search icon style, it says drop down. And we're going to say disabled. And notice it went away over here. We'll hit publish. Now we go back to our website and we reload. And it's no longer there. Next I want to remove this little white line here because that's going to become a problem when we have our video pushing right against here do that, we're going to go back to our WordPress admin, and we will go to the dashboard. And from the dashboard, you go to Appearances, Customize, Header, General, and then we're going to turn Header Border Bottom off and Publish. And finally, we need to remove the spaces above the menu bar. But of course, it'd make too much sense for it to be right here. So once again, we'll go back to our dashboard. From there, we're going to go to Appearance, Customize. And from here, we're going to go to Top Bar, General. And where it says Enable Top Bar, we're going to turn that off. And that one goes away. Hit Publish. And everything's finally cleaned up nicely. Now let's go ahead and change the copyright information in the footer to say what we want it to say. And to do that, we're going to go back to the dashboard. And from here, click on Appearance, then Customize. Then scroll to the bottom and choose Footer Bottom. And now we can change it to say whatever we want. In this case, we'll just put Web Yoda Inc. Now we'll hit Publish. And now notice it has this little OceanWP underscore date. That's a special code that says when you're actually on the real page to fill in a year. And so when we hit refresh on our page, now it'll say Web Yoda Inc. So our empty page is totally complete, and we're ready to add real content to our website. And of course, we're going to start with building our home page. To do this, we're going to go back to our WordPress admin, go back to the dashboard. And now we're going to go into Pages and pick the page we want to work on, in this case, Home. Now notice, again, it doesn't say Elementor next to it because we haven't used Homepage with Elementor yet. We click on Home. So the first time through, the Edit with Elementor button is here. We'll click on that. And it brings up our new page inside Elementor. Here's the tools we're going to use here on the left, and here's where we're going to be building our page on the right. In the same way that driving a vehicle for the first time can be disorienting and maybe intimidating, Using Elementor is going to have that feel at the very beginning as well. Now as opposed to doing a general overview of everything that it'll do step by step, what we're going to do is build pieces step by step and you're going to learn the overview as we go along. And the reason is, is that only about 20% of Elementor are you ever going to use 80% of the time. So there's really no reason to cover a whole bunch of stuff you'll never use as opposed to just showing you everything that we're going to use on a regular basis. So the basic mechanics of the Elementor environment are you have widgets here on the left, and they're the things you're going to use to build your page, and then you're going to have your content area over here where you're going to build it. Now the left item is for creating a new section, whereas the right item is for inserting templates, and the templates are basically sections that have already been created. And so one of the nice things is, is once you've built a section, you can save that as a template and later bring it back in to recycle code. All websites require content to create the website, so in your case, you're going to need content for your website, which is any text and information you have, as well as the pictures that go along with it. In our case, Bethany's provided that. For example, for the content, she's provided a Google Doc that has all of the text and information about what fonts and things she wanted to use to build the entire site. So that allows us to get a head start. And, and it turns out that collecting the content can be a little bit frustrating, but if you already have your content in an order, it's going to make it a lot easier to build your website. Now Bethany also provided a folder that had all of the different files she's going to need. So here's the files for the destinations. There's going to be a gallery. Here's some additional images, some testimonials, videos and audio, different related stuff. So again, being organized and having your content available, um, certainly some of it in advance, is going to make it much easier for you to build your website. So now we're ready to add our video, and to do that, we first need to create a section. So we're going to click on this plus sign here, and it gives us choice 
how many columns we want. Now we can add columns as often as we want. We can adjust the columns, but this is kind of a default. Now for our beginning section, it's only going to have one column, so we'll choose that. And it made this little area up here. Now on the left-hand side, it has three different things you can do. You can control the layout, the style, and advanced features of the particular section. Now in this case, under layout, I'm just going to set the height to be fit to screen. And that made this really big area, and it's going to allow us to put a background video in that spot. Now to add a video background, you first have to have a video. And in our case, we're going to provide you with some resources below this video to get access to free video clips. The first one of those is YouTube. It's obviously the most popular. And one of the advantages to the YouTube environment is any video you use from YouTube, you don't have to worry about licensing because part of the agreement is, is if they put it in YouTube, it gives you the privilege to at least display it in your own personal website. Now in the search box, I'm going to type 4K Beach. And the 4K is for basically really high resolution videos and beach, be obvious. We're going to click on the first one. And here's this really nice beach scene. Now, we can actually just copy the URL up here to our clipboard. And we're going to be able to paste that into our website and make it a background. And this little ad is not going to show up in there. So let's go ahead and go back to our website. And now to do the backgrounds, we're going to click on Style on the left. And then the first section you see is about backgrounds. And the types of backgrounds you can choose from is classic, which is just basically an image, gradient, and movie. So let's review each of these to see how they work. So let's look at making a background here. We can click here to add an image. And then we're going to upload an image that we want to use. We're going to select files. And then we're going to go... Actually, there's an easier way to do this. Let's use Bethany's folder. Then we're going to go to Images, and then we're going to just drag this over here. Now her image is loaded. We can just click on Insert Media at the bottom right, and it's going to place that image in there. Now, initially, our background is black, and we're like, well, that didn't give us what we were looking for. But if we come over here to Positioning on the left here, we can choose Center, Center. And then scrolling down, you'll see there's always extra options if you scroll. Let's set the size to cover. All of a sudden now it kind of makes sense. The second option is this gradient. Now depending on the version of Elementor you're using, there's multiple ways these color palettes will show up. So for example, some users would see the icons looking like this, whereas other users might see these icons as a choice. Regardless of which set of icons you see, clicking on the icon will bring up the color palette Clicking on the icon again will close the color palette. The second option is this gradient. If you want to choose a gradient, and it's going to choose between two colors to gradiate between. So let's pick a second color, pick this green, and so it gradiates from one to the other. Now once you've picked a color, you have to click on the color box to get the display to show you your options again. And now down here at Angle, you can choose the angle that you want that gradient to be at. You can also choose the type of gradient. So if it's linear, that's basically um, left to right. And then we could do radial that goes from inside to out. Now the last background type is the video. So we'll click on the video icon. And here where it says uh, video link, we just paste that video link that we had in there. And, and it'll just show up in the box for us. And that's just really spectacular. So out of nowhere, we went from having a website that didn't have any content in it to having this pretty video. We like the way it looks, so we're going to click on Update at the bottom. And now we can go back to our website and click on the home page. And now we have this spectacular background for our home page. Now in Bethany's situation, she created her own video. So if we go to YouTube in another browser tab, then we do a search on your ultimate vacation. It'll come up as one of the top listings. And here's the video cover she's going to use. And in her section here, it has the credits to all the people that contributed. Some of these were purchased and other ones we were just given the opportunity to use. And we appreciate that. We'll also put these video credits at the bottom of the video you're watching now. So for us to use this video, we simply copy that URL to the clipboard. We go back to our website. And in the box, we put in the new URL 
and it'll show up with the new video. We click on update. We go back to our website. We can click the home button again and we see that it shows up. Now at this point we can go back to our home page and we're ready to start on our next section. And so to add our new section, in her case, if we go back to her home page, we're going to be looking to build this section right here. Now I know there's text on this, we're going to add the text to that video a little bit later, but we want to build this section right here. Now in this section we've got a column on the left that has an image and a column on the right that has content. And at the top and bottom of the section are these little swoosh things. We're going to add the swoosh things later once we built the majority of this page. And so now to make the edit to this we can go ahead and go back to our website. So now we're back at our WordPress and to do our new section we're going to scroll down. We're going to choose a plus sign to add a new section. And in this case it's going to have two areas, one for the picture on the left and for the content on the right. So we'll choose that. And now we have these two little boxes. We're going to want a picture in the left box. So let's go ahead and come to the left hand side. I clicked on that plus to bring this up and we're going to put an image in there. And we're just going to drag this over to that little box. And now we can choose our image, so we click on this. And now we're going to need to upload a new image. So we're going to go back to Bethany's folder and choose her profile picture. So we'll pick that one. Drag it over. It's done loading. Insert media. And now it's added to the page. We'll worry about resizing that in a minute. What we want to do now is put some content on this side over here. And to do that, I'm going to click on this box. Um, now what's interesting is there's three different types of things you can edit just to give you a good idea. Notice this tab, just like this one, that's for editing the section. So when I click on that, it shows me the section controls. So for example, if I click on this one, it shows me the section controls for this one. Now over here, notice there's this little block here. Well that's for editing the column, which that picture's in. And this is editing the column that there's nothing in so far. Whereas the little icon over here is for editing the contents of the column, in this case this image. So we can edit the section, which gives us controls. We can edit the column, which gives us controls. And we can edit the item itself, which gives us controls. So now we want to add some text to the right column. And if I click on that box, it comes up with the options over here. And we're going to put a header in there first. So let's drag a header over there, just like that. And it shows up with some default text. Now it's possible to edit the text here, but you're better to edit it on the left-hand side. It ensures you don't accidentally get some additional funny formatting in there. So we're going to come in here and put our new text, your ultimate vacation guide. And now I want to add another line of text below that. Now, when you're in a section and you want to get the widgets to show back up, you can click this little icon right here and it'll show your choices. And so we're going to drag another header over here. And notice how the blue line is where the widget will be inserted. And then we're going to change the text for that. And then we're going to add a third item, and we're going to do a text editor this time because we want to put a bunch of text under that. And then we'll come over here and we'll paste in our content for that. Now for this section, Bethany used the green background of the color scheme that she chose. So we're going to click on the section tab, and then we're going to go to style. And notice where the background thing is where we did the video before. We're going to choose classic, which is going to give us the opportunity just to choose a color. Because you can either do a, just a color or you could do an image. And we're going to put in, paste in the green that she gave us. And then again, click on the color icon to close that out. And now we have the green background that's going to match what she had on our website. And at this point, we're ready to format the rest of this text to make it look correct. Let's take a quick field trip back to Bethany's site and notice that she has some large text here that's white, medium text here that's black, and smaller text here that's white. 
and these turn out to be three separate fonts and she gives us those fonts so if we look in the document that she gave us she told us what she wanted these fonts to be and one of the things that's really nice about WordPress is that instead of having to define all the fonts every single time you use them you can actually set defaults and so that's what we're going to do next we're going to go back to our WordPress and now over here at the hamburger icon we're going to click on that and we're going to click on default fonts now the primary headline is the large white text Bethany used the secondary headline is the medium text she used and the body text is just the regular everyday I'm reading in a website text now accent text we haven't used and so we're not going to be setting that today so we're going to go ahead and set the three types for Bethany's website now the primary headline for Bethany she chose Lato and then the weight we're going to leave as the default is 600 basically the weight is how bold something is and when you look inside of there default you got bold and then you've got a gradiated scale and six I think 400 is basically um, regular bold so 600 is a little bit more bold than that next for the secondary headline she wanted to use Roberto slab and that ends up being the default in this case so that worked out well and we'll also use the same weight for um, that's the default there and then we're going to click on the body text as our last one and for body text she chose open sans so we'll go ahead and choose open sans and we'll also use the default weight for that now at this point we can hit apply and now all of our default fonts have been set but you're saying to yourself hey Yoda how do I know what my font choices are I will tell you well, let's go over here to our tab and then we're going to type in Google fonts and hit enter and then from here just click on the first link it'll be fonts.google.com and these are all the fonts that are built into WordPress that are usable by you and they're broken down by the different types of categories and trending fonts and different things like that so basically if you're interested in a certain font let's say well what does Lado look like well I can go and type it in and then I can see well that's what Lado looks like now with our default font set we can go in and set the color and size of the different fonts we're using So we're going to head back to our WordPress and just a reminder remember if you click here you're editing the section which is this entire area it's the the information that applies to that whole area if you edit in either of these little black boxes you're editing the particular columns and if you edit the little right edge of these these are for the particular items that are within the columns so there's three levels of editing now in this case we want to change the size of this particular piece of text so we're going to click on the little blue box here and it brings up the controls for that on this side now remember there was something called a primary heading which is the large text that's white and the secondary heading which is the medium text that is black well to choose those it's down here and under this HTML tag we want to choose h1 which is going to make the primary heading um, the choice for this text right here now we're going to click on the style options for that and typography is going to allow us to set style for that particular font whereas above that is text color now that text is supposed to be white so we'll click here and we'll go ahead and choose white and again click on the little box to exit out of there so now our text is white now we can do the typography and the typography is going to allow us to set the individual attributes for the font so for example if we want to change the size we can scroll in and out on this or we can manually set it we're going to set it to 50 in this situation and then the weight we could set that that's going to be our default now for transform if you want it to be all uppercase it'll do that for you all lowercase capitalize which makes the first letter capital on each word normal and we're just going to stick to the default also under style you can pick normal italic or oblique uh, in this case obviously default and the decorations allow you to say whether it's going to be underlined overlined line through or none or choosing default and at the bottom you can choose a line height which is how much space is between the lines and you can space how much or choose how much space is between the letters 
And by putting nothing in these boxes, you're going with the defaults on those as well. And for me, I'm almost always using the defaults because they're set to a standard for a reason. All right, so that typography is fixed. Now text shadowing allows you to set text shadowing around it to a particular color. So let's say we want to have it to be um, black. So we can choose black. And then as we scroll up or down, you notice that the letters over here are getting um, a line around them, bigger and smaller. And if I close out of that, I can choose a blend mode so it gives you a lot of different options as far as ways of having special effects on your text now for me I'm just gonna have normal and I'm not gonna have that particular feature on this one so I'll pick default now I'm gonna set the text for the next box so I'll come over here and click on that and I'm gonna go to style and we want to use black for this one so we'll choose black We'll exit out of that. And then under typography, it turned out that she had decided, even though her secondary um, headline she wanted to be Roberto Slab, that in this particular use she wanted to make it Montserrat. And so we're going to choose that. And we'll set the size to 32. So we can exit out of that. And now we'll click on the text for our edit box. We're going to go to Style. This text is supposed to be white, so we'll choose white. Close that out, and now we'll go to typography, and default is the font. And for the size, let's put 18. Now we've closed out of that, and we're ready to edit the settings for the picture. Now one problem is, even though this is a great picture, it's way too big, and it's certainly not what Bethany has on her site. Notice how much smaller it is. And the reason is, is that the default when we gave it two columns was 50%. And clearly she's made hers less than 50%. So we'll go back to our WordPress. And then we'll, we'll click on the column itself. And now we can make a change. Instead of 50, let's try 30. That looks a little bit more like what she had. We'll click on Update. We'll come over here. We'll reload our page and that looks significantly more like what she had. Now at this point, notice that this stuff is centered and ours is not. So we want to go back and make that center adjustment as well. So we can come back over to our WordPress and then we'll click on this text and at the bottom we can center it and then we'll click on this text and at the bottom we can center it and now we can update and go back to our website and hit reload and now it's also centered now if you notice in our version there's a lot of space on either side whereas in Bethany's are not so this particular section she has full width instead of boxed in so let's go ahead and go back to our WordPress and then for that particular section we're going to select that section and then on the left we're going to turn on section stretch and then we're going to turn on content full width to be full width there, like that. And then we're going to click on update. And now we'll go back to our site and we'll hit reload. And now it basically looks the same as her site. Now we want to go back to Bethany's website and notice the dividers that it has with the little wave looking thing and the extra space at the top and the extra space at the bottom. And again, the wave thing. We're going to go ahead and make those updates to our version. So if we go back to WordPress, the first thing we're going to do is add some space in the top and bottom of this section. So let's go ahead and click on the section itself. And then if you go to the Advanced tab, we can add padding to it. Now if you add padding in here, it adds it all the way around. So for example, if I put 40 in here, it'll do it at the top and the bottom and the left and the right. Well, if I don't want it that way, I can click on this little guy here. I didn't really want it on the left and the right so much, maybe. But I wanted it on the top and the bottom. So that allowed me to add the spacing at the top and the bottom, just the way we wanted to. Now we're going to add the spacer in between here that looks like a little wave. And it actually is added to the bottom of the top section. So we're going to click on the top section and make it the active one. We're going to go to Style, and at the bottom of Style, there's a thing called Shape Divider. And inside Shape Divider, you can put a divider at the top or at the bottom, or both. We're going to choose Bottom. 
And then we're going to choose the Waves Brush, and it shows up down here. And now we're going to click on to change the color and use the green that Bethany used. Exit out of that. And then we're going to set the height of this to, say, 60. And now we have that wave divider there. Now to put the wave divider at the bottom, we're going to come into this section. We'll scroll down. And then we're going to go back into our style for this one. And we're going to scroll down, shape divider. And we're also going to put it on the bottom. And then we're going to choose our shape of the waves brush. And it's the white, the same as hers. You see if it come over here, hers has a white one at the bottom. So that's okay. But it's too tall. So we'll go in here and change the height of that to say 60. And then there's not enough space in between these anymore. It's a little close. So we'll go back to our advanced tab. And where we had 40 for the bottom, let's try 60. And maybe 70. So now we have enough space. We have the divider at the bottom and the divider at the top. So we can hit update. And then go back to our website and hit refresh. And we have the divider at the top, and we have the divider at the bottom, and we're ready to do our next section. Now we're going back to Bethany's website to review the next section, which are these three call to action areas. And notice when you move your mouse over the icon, they pop out a little bit, and over the buttons, they pop out a little bit. We're going to create one of these call to action areas, and then we'll make two copies and then just change the content on those. So let's go back to our WordPress. And now we're going to make a new section, and this section is going to have three columns in it. And now for the first column, we're going to click on that. We're going to want to add what's called an icon box. So we're going to scroll down, and there's our icon box. We're going to drag that over, and look at that little blue line. Where that blue line is, that's where it's going to insert it at. And now I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to click on this icon to bring the list up again. And I'm going to grab a button, and we're going to bring it down here, and we're going to add a button below that as well. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and center our button so our button's in the right spot. Now we want to style our icon box, so we're going to click on that to make it active. And up here where it says star, we're going to pick sun because that's the one we used. The title we're going to use is destinations. And the content is that. Now at this point, we want to make the changes for colors and things to this, so we're going to come into the Style tab, and under Primary Color, we're going to pick the yellow that Bethany used in her website. Close that out. And then under Content, it has two areas. It has the title, which is this guy, and it has the description, which is this guy. And for the description, I mean for the title, we're going to set the color to the teal that she used. It was in her list of colors. We'll close that out. And now under Typography, we're going to make the font a little bit bigger. Let's say 28. And then for the description size of the font, let's go down here and make it a little bigger. We'll choose 18. Go out of that. Now we'll scroll back to the top, and under Advanced, we want to add a little spacing around here. So for our padding, let's put 20 all the way around that. It gives it a little space around there. And then notice that our icon doesn't bounce. So let's go back to the style. And under here, it has normal and it has hover. And basically, when you hover over, it's when that happens. So we're going to click on hover. And then to hover animation, we scroll down and it says bounce in. And now when we move our mouse over, it bounces like the other one. Now, I don't want these words to spread out in this section as they are, so we're going to click on that. We'll go into our style for that section. At the bottom is the content, and this is the description, so we'll go into typography and scroll to the bottom of that, and we'll see that there's a line height, and let's just put that at 1.3. That's a lot better. Now, let's make some changes to our button, so we'll click on the button item, and the text on the button should say learn more. The link should be for our Destinations Jamaica page. And then we're going to set the color of the button under Style. We'll just click on the background color and put Bethany's green in there. And close that out. Now we're ready to update. 
and we can go back to our website and see what it looks like. So we'll click up here, and then we'll do reload, and our call to action is ready to go, and we can make our two duplicates now. To make our two duplicates, we'll go back to our WordPress, and then we'll come over and look at the, or highlight this icon in the left-hand corner. That's the column icon. If we right-click it, there's an option to duplicate. If we right-click it again, there's an option to duplicate. Well, now we've got to come over here and right-click and delete the two that were extra that we had. And right-click and delete that one. So now we have our three areas, and we just need to update the content on those and maybe do some magic and make that happen pretty quick. Now our content has been updated for the two here, and we're ready to hit Update. And go back to our WordPress website page. Hit Reload. And there we have all three of our call to actions. Now we want to add our wave divider at the bottom. And on Bethany's site, it's that teal color. So we're going to come back over to our WordPress. We're going to select this section, because it's going to go at the bottom of this section. Then we're going to go to a Style. And in inside of Shape Divider, we're going to choose the bottom one. And then we're going to come inside of here and choose Waves Brush. We're going to set our color to that teal. Close that out. And we're going to set the height to 60. And now we notice that there's some, clearly there needs to be more space here. So to do that, we're going to go into Advanced. And then we're going to unlock this. And then we're just going to add a whole bunch at the bottom, let's say 70. And maybe we'll try 80. And that looks good. So we can hit Update. Go back to our site, hit reload, and the call to action section is complete. Okay, okay, it's almost complete, but when you go across these buttons, they don't light up and they don't bulge out. So let's come back to our WordPress. We'll click on a button. We gotta go to style and we gotta set the hover for those. And then the background color is gonna be Bethany's yellow. We'll close out of that. And then the animation is gonna be our bounce in. And now that one bounces, and then we're going to magically do the other two just the same. And now they all work, and we can hit update, get back to our website, hit reload, and we really are done now. Now we're ready to do the next section. On Bethany's website, the next section is this travel tip section, basically frequently asked questions about travel. And it uses a header, and then it has this accordion effect where you're able to put content inside of each of these items. And at the bottom, there's a button. So we want to head back to our WordPress. And we'll add a new section at the bottom. It's going to be one column. And now in that column, we want to first put a header. So we'll add that in there. And then we'll pick another item, which is called an accordion. We'll scroll down, and that one's right there. And then finally, we're going to put a button in there the very bottom. And so now we have the three items we're going to put in there. Now we just need to add content and style them. So to start, let's just go ahead and change out our content. So we'll click on that. And the header for that will be top five travel tips. And the first item in our accordion, if we click on the accordion, it comes up over here. First item in there, we're going to put the name here. It's going to be make a list. And then we can scroll down here, and this is where the content's going to go. So we'll need to delete the content that's in there. And then put our own content. And so now we have our first one. And now we're ready to edit the second one. So we can come down here, and we click on the second one right there. And the title for this one is that. And then we'll replace our content. And you can stretch that box so you can see exactly what you're putting in there. And now we have two of these. See, they both work. And then you can add a third item, like that. And we'll put our title here for this one, like so. And then our new content. And we can scroll down. Actually, we can close that one by clicking there. And then we can add another one for our th um, fourth of five. Put the title there. Put our content there. Close that one down and add our last one, like that. And so now this is where the title will go. So this one will be sunscreen. 
and the content. Sunscreen's good. Use sunscreen. And now we have a fully functional accordion with a title and a button, but we still have some more work to do on these. Now we're ready to style this section, so we'll start by styling this header and we'll come into the style section and the color for this header is going to be Bethany's yellow and then we're going to go into typography to set the size and let's go ahead and set that at 30 and we can close that out now we'll click on the accordion go into the style for that and then under title We'll set the color of the titles to white. Now that's obviously going to make it disappear for the moment. So we'll pick white. Close that out. And now we'll go into the background and we're going to set the background to that teal that we use. But to do the teal it needs to be in the section. So we need to click on the section and then go to style because we want the whole section to be teal. And then we get a background type, classic, and we're going to set the color and set it to that teal. And all of a sudden everything shows back up. We can close out of that. Let's go back into our accordion. And we want to go back to the style for the title. Because under typography we wanted to make that font a bit bigger. So let's say 30. And then close that out. And then for the content itself, we want typography. And we're going to set that content to say 18. And then we need to set the color for that to black. And that might do it. Now that looks kind of big though, so let's change that out. Go back into Title. And Typography. Try 20. And if we click on that, that looks really good. Okay, so now we need to work on the button. But I'm going to actually delete the button. And I'm going to delete it for two reasons. Number one, it's going to be styled the same as these. So basically, if I make a copy of this one, I don't have to put all the bells and whistles on it. I just have to change a few settings on it. And secondly, I want to save this section as a template so we can use it on our travel tips page later. So let's go ahead and delete our button. So we can come over here and right click and choose delete. And now we want to save this as a template. Now to save this as a template, we go up to the section tab. We right click on it and then we choose save as template and then we give it a name so i'm going to say your ultimate vacation dash and we're going to call this travel tips and now we have that particular travel tip saved and when we go to our travel tips page we'll be able to insert that and we'll have to build it again so that'll be real helpful and when we get there we'll show you how to do that so i'll close that out now we're going to make a copy of this button so I'm going to right click, duplicate, and now I can drag this button down here and notice it, bam, right center just the way we want it. So now all we have to do is make the updates to this button. So this button, if we click on it, over here is where we need to change our text. And the button should say more travel tips. And the link will be that. And now we've got everything set up and ready to go. We can click on Update, go back to our page, hit Reload, see our new accordion in action. Everything's working. Now the one thing is this is a little close to the top, so should, we should add some um, space at the top and the bottom, and we're going to find that we do that all the time. So we're going to come in here, go back into the section, go into the Advanced tab, unlink all those and then for the top we'll say put 20 try 30 and for the bottom 30 and that should do it we'll do update back to our site hit reload and that section is ready to go the one thing i forgot to do is that in Bethany's sites there's no lines around it in our site there is and it actually turns out that there are lines around hers you can't get rid of the lines but you can tell the lines to be the same color as the background which basically makes them go away 
So we're going to do the same thing on ours. So we're going to come back over here. And then we're going to choose the accordion. And then we're going to go into style. And then the border width. Nothing matters. You put zero. It doesn't work. Uh, but you can come in here and change it and use that same teal. And then when you go to update. And you go look at the site. Those lines will disappear. And so we have the effect we want. Now uh, I went ahead and went back and resaved our template without the line. So when we use our template later, it'll be correct as well. Now we're ready to do our next section. And on Bethany's website, you'll see it says image carousel. And the dividers actually um, overlay into the images. So they're actually inside. Both of those are inside that section. So we'll be adding those as well. So let's go back to our WordPress. And then we're going to scroll to the bottom, create a new section, one column. And on the right, we're going to make this full stretch, full width, with columns having no gaps. We're basically wanting this thing to be as wide as possible. Now we're going to click on this icon to bring up our list, and we're going to do the image carousel. And it's going to be located a little bit farther down. Drag that over. And now it's entered in there. Now we need to add images. So we can click on images here. And we're going to upload images. Then we're going to go to Bethany's image folder. And inside of her folder is a gallery. And then we're going to select all of these. There's 24 of them. Drag them over to the left. And it'll insert all of those for us. Now our images have uploaded and we can click on create a new gallery and just choose insert. And here's our gallery. Now we're going to set the image size to full. And then we're going to tell it to do three at a time to show three at a time. I think that's the default. And then we're going to do slide three at a time. Now I like the arrows, but I don't really like the dots. So we're going to scroll down and there's a place to modify the navigation and we're going to choose just the arrows. Now we need to put our little dividers on the top and the bottom and to do that we need to pick this particular section. Go to style and under shape divider we're going to do the top one first and we're going to pick our same wave brush and then we're going to set the color to the teal that Bethany likes and then we'll close that out. And then we're going to set the height to 60. And it's not showing up, but the reason is, is we need to turn on this bring to front because the carousel is sitting on top of it. So now we can see it. And now we're going to pick the bottom. We're going to pick waves brush. We're going to pick color white. And close that. We're going to pick 60. And then we're going to turn that on. And now we have a fully functioning carousel. Now it's interesting, if you come in here and try these different ones, you'll see they do lots of stuff. So don't just decide on one. You can actually go through and try a whole bunch of different things. It does neat stuff. I just happened to pick this one. Actually, Bethany picked it because it looks really good for what she's trying to do. So now our carousel is complete. We can click on Update. Go back to the website. Hit Reload. And we're ready for the next section. This carousel we're actually going to use on multiple pages, so let's go ahead and go back and right click on the section and save as template and we'll give it a name, Your Ultimate Vacation, and this will be Carousel. Save it, and now we have these two that we'll be able to recycle and use later. But you're saying to yourself, boy, those images look really good. Where am I going to get a bunch of images like that for free? I will tell you. If you're looking to access the best royalty-free photos and images online at no cost to you, then you'll want to check out my best free stock photos and images video at some point. Now we're ready to go to our next section. And that section will be the testimonials. Now I noticed the animation and stuff. We're going to show you how to do all that animation later. But at this point, we're just going to learn how to build this testimonial page. It's going to have a header. It's going to have one testimonial, and then we'll clone it, and then we'll make another clone to have four of them total and a button at the bottom. So that's our goal. So let's go ahead and get started, and we're going to go over to our WordPress. 
start a new section. We'll have one cell. We're going to make it a stretch section, full width. And then inside of it, we're going to put some different widgets. So let's go to the menu of widgets. We're going to have a header at the top. Now pick another widget. And then we're going to have this intersection. And basically what an intersection is, it's kind of a sub-widget. Um, basically it allows you to put two columns within it. And the reason why I'm using this is that when you display this on a mobile device, whatever's in this cell will nicely wrap under the one that's there. And since all these testimonials are kind of look the same, but some may be taller than others, this is going to make it look better on a mobile device. And then at the bottom, we're going to need a button. So we'll come up here. And we'll right click on that and we're going to do duplicate and we'll drag that button down here somehow. Now we got them in order. That was tough. So next we're going to put the text that we need to have in here, which is testimonial. So we'll put that there. And then we want to go to the style right here. And we're going to set the color of this. The Bethany's green. And then we're going to go to do the size of this. So we'll set the size to 40. And then Bethany had a special font she wanted to use. I'm not even going to begin to try to pronounce that. And we're going to use a weight of 300. Close that out. Go back to content. We'll center it. Now we need another widget. We're going to scroll down. We want an image box, drag it in there. And notice that our image is at the top right now. We want our image to the left, just like that. And now we need the image. So we're going to come over here and click on image. And we need to upload some images. And to do that, we're going to use Bethany's folder. So we'll go back to here, and then under testimonials. And we'll go ahead and drag all these in at once. And then we're going to pick that one, I think, is the first one. Let all those load. And that's the item we're going to pick for the first testimonial. So we'll insert that media. And then we're going to click on the heading for this. And the heading is going to be that. Now, in HTML, instead of just an ampersand, you're supposed to put that particular code. So you want to make sure that you do it the same way that's there so that it works in all browsers. Now we need the content that's going to go in here. So we'll put that in there like that. And now we have a testimonial built. And now we just need to style it to be the same as Bethany's. So now we'll go over to our Style tab. And this determines the space between here and here. So let's say if I put 20 in there, it makes it a little bit bigger. And this decides how big this is. Let's say we'll put 40 there. And at the bottom, we can modify the content for these two things. For example, the title. We want that to be black. So we'll scroll down and choose black. We can close that out. And then we can check in on the typography, see what our options are there. Let's go ahead and set this to 20. That might have been the same, but it looks good. Close that out, and then when we go down to the typography for the bottom, and scroll and look at that. Go ahead and make that 15. That's a little bit bigger. And that should do it. The only weird thing is there's a little tick mark in there, so let's go in and change that and get rid of that. Now we have one testimonial that's completed. Now to build the second one, we just right-click and choose Duplicate, and then we can drag that one by that little handle there over here. And now we can right click on this section, this intersection, and duplicate, and now we have the four that we need. And then finally we need to update this button to do exactly what we need it to do. So it's going to say more testimonials, and the link is going to be testimonials. So our testimonial section is complete except that we need to change the content on these other three. And we're going to go ahead and use some magic again to change those all at once. 
And now all of our testimonials are updated. And we're going to have a testimonials page. So again, we want to make ourselves a template. So we're going to right click there, save as a template, name our template, your ultimate vacation testimonials, hit save. And now we have three templates to use later on. We'll close that. We'll hit update, go back to our site, hit reload. And the testimonial is there. We just will have our little border thing that we'll end up doing at some point. Let's go ahead and get started on our next section. We'll go to Bethany's website, and we're going to build this parallax section down here at the bottom where this image slides like that really nicely. And then we're going to put a join email list in that. So let's go ahead and go back to our WordPress. And we're going to go to the bottom, and we're going to create a new section, one column. And then under Advance for that column, we're going to unlink those. We're going to go to 130 for the top, 130 for the bottom. That spreads that out. Now we're going to go to Style. And we're going to set the background type to just a regular image. And we're going to choose our sunset image. Insert Media. And now at the bottom, we're going to set Attachment to Fixed. Scroll down a little bit and set size to cover. And that's starting to look nice. Next, we're going to go back up and we're going to add an inner widget. And then in, we're going to delete one of these cells. We're going to set the width of our inner widget to, say, 500. Then we're going to go back to our widgets and we're going to put a header in there for now as a placeholder. And then for this particular column, we're going to come in and set a background. And let's say we'll set the background to that color. We're going to give it some transparency. If we come down in the border section, we can round the corners with border radius. Let's say 12. And now we'll go ahead and add our separators for this. So we'll come into that section. We'll go to Style, scroll down. And for our dividers, we're going to do the top one. It's going to be white. So we'll pick our Waves brush. We'll pick a color. It's already white, um, so we don't have to do that. And we'll set a height of 60. And then we'll choose Bottom, Waves brush. We'll set the color on this one to Bethany's Black. And we'll close out of that. And we'll set our height to 60. And we have that piece completed. We'll click on Update. We'll go back to our website. Hit reload, and we have that working. Now we need to put in our join email list form in here. So we're going to go back to our WordPress, and now we're going to need to exit out of this page and go back to the dashboard because we're going to work on the contact form 7. It's going to allow us to build the mechanics that are going to make that work. So on your left hand menu, you'll see a contact, and you can click on that. And then when you scroll down, you'll see there's already a form there. We're going to click on that form. And we're actually going to make our Contact Us form, and then we're going to make our Join form so we don't have to come back here later. And we're just going to rename that Contact Us. And I can hit Save just to make that change. Now if you scroll down, you'll see they've already done most of the work for us, but I want to show you how the mechanics of this work. So this particular form is going to have your name, your email, a subject and your message. Well suppose that you wanted to have the telephone number in here. I can go in here and add a um, spot in between. I can click on this telephone option here and then I'm just going to click insert tag. Now all we need to do is make the content that goes along with this look the same as the other. So for example I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. I'm going to paste it there. Now if I take the telephone tag I copy that. I can just paste it where the one on this one was. And so now we effectively have the telephone number that's going to be in the form itself. Now notice up here in the text in the email fields there's an asterisk. That asterisk tells it to be required field. So if we want the telephone field to be required, which we do in this case, we we'll put an asterisk there and now that will be required. Now for the label We'll just simply rename it to your phone. You can make it whatever you want. 
And notice that it says required here, but that's just text. We actually had to put the little bitty asterisk here to make it required. We're just saying tell the person that's going to use the form that this is going to be a required field. Now obviously this is just one example. We added phone, but you could add any of these other things with a text area, drop downs, check boxes, radio buttons, and it'll do all the mechanics for you. You'd just be instructing on what you wanted to do. At this point we want to hit save and that will tell the system that we have this new field in there. And then we're going to go into the mail tab and make some adjustments in here. Now the first thing we're going to do is set the to. The to field is where do you want the email to go to. By default it's the admin you set up for your WordPress environment. But we want in this case to go to comments at yourultimatevacation.com. You can make this go to any email you want. So you can make it to go to your personal email if you chose as well. Next we're going to make an adjustment to the from field, meaning who did the email come from, and we're going to put no reply at yourultimatevacation.com. Now obviously that's not who it's really coming from, but that keeps the server happy. Who it's really coming from is under these additional headings that they already put there for you, where it says your-email, and if you look back at the form, that's the email they've submitted. So in reality it's going to work the way we want, and we're going to keep the server happy by setting that. Finally, we want to scroll down to the body of the message. And currently in the body of the message, it does not have the phone number we added on the form itself. So we can come up here, and we can highlight this. That is our field for our telephone. And then inside of our form, at the bottom, we can make some space. And we can put phone, and then we can add our tag. And now it'll add that field when we receive an email. So we can come back up here, hit save. And now our contact form is complete. Next we want to make our join our email form. And to do that we're going to click on contact on the left again. That brings up our list. And it has the contact us we created. If we highlight that we can make a duplicate of it. Now that duplicate comes up automatically. And then we can change the name of it right here. Now we're going to put our name for our new form in here. We'll call it join our email. We'll scroll down and look at the fields for the form. In this form, we only need the email and the name of the person, so we're going to delete those three. And so now it just has the person's name and their person's email. And we can click on Save over here on the right. And now we're going to make some adjustments to our Mail tab. And if we go in there and scroll down, where it says Subject, we're going to change this out. And we're going to change that to say Join Our Email. The rest of this can stay the same. And in the bottom section, we only need the person's name and email. So we're going to delete those. We'll come over here and put a space here. Put email. Get rid of the less than and greater than. Now we'll just be receiving their name and email. Scroll back up. Hit save. And now both of our forms, our join email form and our contact form, are ready to be inserted into Elementor. So now we'll go back to Elementor. So we'll click on Pages. We're going to scroll down and click on Home, because that's the page we're working on. Edit with Elementor. And then we're going to scroll down to the bottom. And we want to make an adjustment here. We're going to add our form in right there. To add our form, we're going to go down and we're going to pick the very bottom one, which is going to be this Void Contact Form 7. And we will just enter it right there. And it's just an empty form at this point. And then we're going to pick the contact form it's going to be, and it's going to be our join our email. And now we want to change some of the styling settings, so let's go ahead into the styling. We'll click on that. And at this point we're going to need a tiny bit of coding. Um, in our first field at the top we're going to put color colon white semicolon. Then we're going to scroll down to where it says all input CSS. We're going to put the same thing, color colon white semicolon. And then we're going to scroll down one more time and we're looking for the part where the submit button is and we're going to put the same thing again color colon white semicolon and now we're also going to add one more piece of code here which is the background color background colon and then this is the code for Bethany's yellow now at the end of that you'll notice we put a semicolon every time you do CSS there's a semicolon at the end of each of those and that particular piece of code made this yellow button and it made the text on it white. And then the two that we added up here, the, the second one we added, changed the code that's inside of these boxes so that it shows up white. 
and then the very top one at the top was doing the your name and your email so that's what that did so at this point what we're going to do is we're going to click on this column that's inside of here and then we're going to go to style I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom go to typography and then hit center and that allowed us to center these different things here to make that look nice now we want to change the header up here to be what it's supposed to say. So we're going to come back over here and in this box we'll put join our email. And now we'll go into style, typography. We're going to set the size, let's say 28. And we'll make the color, we'll say white. And that should do it. So we can now hit update and go back to our website and hit reload. And now our site has a fully functional join email form. So we're ready to do the next section, which is going to be the footer. Let's head back over to Bethany's website, and we're going to look at the footer. We're going to have a picture of her as our guide. We're going to have a follow us section. We're going to have a contact info section, and then we're going to have navigational section. Let's go see how to add those. And first, let's go back to our WordPress so we can get started. To edit the footer, we need to exit back to the dashboard. So we're going to click the hamburger icon and choose Exit to Dashboard. Now on the left-hand side, we're going to choose Appearance, and then we're going to choose Widgets. And you'll notice over here there's four sections. Here's the footer 1, footer 2, footer 3, footer 4, and those relate to 1, 2, 3, 4. Now for footer 1, we're going to put a picture of Bethany. So let's scroll down and find the Image Widget. We click on that, and then you want to choose Footer 1, Add Widget. Now we can put a title, Your Vacation Guide. We'll pick a picture, and we'll use the one we already have for her right here. Add to Widget. And for a link, we're going to put a link to what will be the About Us page. We'll hit Save, and come back over here, and Reload. And we have our first section. So let's go back over here and get ready to do section two. And for footer two, we're going to use the social icon. So we'll scroll up and find that widget. Choose footer two, add widget. And then we're going to use all the defaults, but we're going to be adding in her social media right here. And we use a little magic to make that happen real quick. Now we can scroll down and click save. Go back to our page, hit reload. And now we have a fully functional follow us section with all of our social media. We're ready for the next section. Come back over here. And for footer three, we need to scroll to the top. We're going to choose the contact info option. And we'll pick footer three. Add widget. And for this one, we're going to use a lot of their defaults, but we'll change out a couple things. For example, we're going to put text and say, we would love to hear from you. Now for the address section, we're not going to do that on this section, so we're going to take those out. And for the phone section, we'll just change out the phone number that'll be for this website. For the mobile and fax section, we won't be using those, so we'll take all that information out. And then for the email section, we'll put the email for this website. And last, for the website, we're going to actually use this to do a message us box as opposed to doing a website. So for a title, we're going to put message us. And for the URL, we're going to make it go to our Contact Us form. And for our URL text, we're going to put Message Us Now. We won't have any Skype, so we'll turn that off. We can hit Save. Come back to our website. Hit Reload. And there's our third section ready to go. So for our final section, we'll go back to WordPress. And we're going to do a custom menu. That's how we're going to get the navigation in there. So we'll scroll back up near the top. There's the custom menu widget, and we're going to do that for footer 4, add widget. And again, mostly defaults. We'll set the title to where to next. Then we'll choose our menu, which is the main menu we have. For our link color, we're going to choose the color that was Bethany's white. And then for the hover color, we're going to use Bethany's green. And the rest is just defaults. We can hit save. Go back to our website, hit reload, and we have a fully function in footer. Now notice that our little wave separator is a different color, and that's because that's the one that Bethany wants to use for the menu and for the footer. So we're going to actually have to go back into the customized section to change the footer background color. So let's go ahead and head back to WordPress. And from here, we're going to go to Appearance, 
Customize. And we're going to scroll down and go into Footer Widgets. Scroll to the bottom of that and where it says Background Color. We'll change this to Bethany's Black. We'll hit Publish. Come back over here. Hit Reload. And now our footer is complete. Now that also means that our entire first page is complete. And I think hopefully at this point you're like, wow, you know, this actually is doable. I can make this happen. It may take longer than I might have thought it would, but it's going to be easier than I thought it would as well. So we're ready to get started on the About Us page. And to do that, let's go ahead and go back to WordPress. And from here we can just close that. And we'll go into Pages. And we'll pick our About page. And then just click on Edit with Elementor to get started. Now notice now our new blank page has our footer on it, as will all of our pages. So we'll go back to Bethany's website, and we want to see what her About Us looks like. So it's going to have a little movie at the top, special version of the logo. We're going to see how to do that. Some text on the left, picture on the right, and our carousel. So we'll be inserting the carousel that we've used before. And we're going to go to YouTube, so we'll make a new tab. And then I'm going to do a search for Landscapes Nature Relaxation 4K. And we'll pick on the first one. And I'll notice that this video has the background that I want to use, but it also has a bunch of text and other stuff going on. Another problem is if you click out way farther in the video, it's about something other than what we're trying to do. So the trick is, is that we only want to use a certain piece of the video. So if we click back over here, we can find a starting point we want to start at. So for example, anywhere in here, if I want to have a starting point, I can just choose to pause it. And when I pause it, for example, I pause it right at one minute. Well, when I right click on this and then choose copy video URL in current time, and I paste it in my browser, it shows 60. What's the number of seconds? Well, that can be my starting point. And then let's say later on in the video, I kept playing it for a little bit and it went forward in time a little bit. Then I can pause it again. I can right click on that, choose copy video URL with time, and now it says it's 186. So I can have a starting and ending point, and we want to use those in our video to only loop through that small piece of time. Copy that URL to our clipboard, and go back to Elementor, and we're ready to add in that background at the top of this new page. So we're going to click on there. We're going to choose a single section. We'll go to Style, and we're going to do Video, and we're going to paste the video name in there. And then I'm going to give it the starting and ending point in seconds. So 60 to start with. And I chose 130 seconds for my ending point. And you can see the little video playing in here. We're going to give it some space. We'll unlink that. At the top we'll put 30. And at the bottom, we'll put 60 because we know we're going to do our wave divider. Go into Style first, and then scroll down and choose Shape Divider. We'll go to the bottom, and then we'll pick our wave. And then we'll set our color to Bethany's green. Set our height to 60. And now we've got this section getting close to what we want it to be. So now we're going to go ahead and choose put another widget in by clicking that icon. We'll put a header in here. This should say About. Now we can go into Style to style that. And let's tell it to be white. We'll use that fancy font that Bethany used before. Let's say we'll set the size to 40. And then we'll close out of that. And let's get a little shadow. So we'll just go in and give it a black as a color and ramp that up and you can see a little shadow behind it. Now we'll go over to the content tab. We'll center it. And now we're going to add an extra column. So we're going to right click on this column and add a column. Now just between these you can grab on the middle and shrink it like that. And now all of a sudden it's starting to be where we want it to be at. Now for this particular column we're going to add a background to it, so we'll come in here, choose that, and we're going to use our logo that we used earlier. We'll insert that, and we need to choose Center Center, and we'll set the size to Cover, 
and it's starting to look like the logo we want. Let's click on the text again. We're going to go into Advanced, and we'll give it 20 at the top and 20 at the bottom. And now we have our logo at the top. Go ahead and go down to the bottom and click Update. Now we can go back to our website and hit Reload. And our header shows up and we're ready to add the next section. So let's go ahead and go back to Elementor. We're going to add a section. This is going to have two columns. The right column is going to have a picture. The left column is going to have text. Let's go ahead and set the background color for that section while we're here. So we'll pick color. I'll we'll use Bethany's green again. And now we need to pick a picture for the right hand side. So we'll go up here to choose so we can drag in the image widget. We'll choose the upload file option. We'll go back to Bethany's images. And inside the images, we'll find the image we're looking for, and it'll be this one. We'll drag that over, and that loaded. And we can click Insert Media. And now we want to put some text on this side, so we're going to go back to Widgets. And we're going to choose Text Editor. And we want to put the content in here that goes there. So we will replace it with the right content. Choose a Style tab. Go into here. Color white. Close that. Let's make the font a little bit bigger. And we can scroll down. And that section is complete. We can hit Update. Go back to our page. Hit Reload. And we can see that's been added and we just need to add the carousel at the bottom now. So let's go back to Elementor. I'm going to come to the bottom. And now we're going to choose this folder instead of this icon, instead of the plus, because we're going to go in here. And we're going to choose My Templates. And there's our My Templates. And there's our carousel. I'm going to insert that. I always choose No on this. And it inserts our carousel. Now notice that it's got the wrong color at the top. And because it's uh, going to be the footer at the bottom, it has the wrong color at the bottom. So we're going to just change those out. So we're in the section. And we'll go in here. Shape divider. Change the top color to that. We'll go into bottom. And we'll change the bottom color to match the footer color, which is the Bethany Black. And we can exit out of that. We can hit Update. We can go back to our website and hit Reload, and the About Us page is done just like that. Now we're ready to go to the next page, so we're going to go back to Elementor, and then we go to the icon up here, Exit to Dashboard, and now we need to go back to Pages and pick our next page. So we'll scroll down, pick Destinations Jamaica as our next page to edit. Click on Edit with Elementor. And now we can start on the Destination Jamaica page. And the first thing we'll do is make a column, one column in that section. We're going to stretch it full width. And now let's set the background. And we're going to use an image, so we'll pick Classic. And we're going to need a loaded image from here, so we need to go to Bethany's folder. So we'll go to back up here, Destination Jamaica. I went over here, we needed to do the upload folder. Now we can just drag this over. Now that's added. We can insert media and it shows at the top. We're going to set attachment to fixed. Size to contained. And now we're going to put some content in here. So we'll go back up here. And let's just drag this widget in there three times. So the first one will be destination, so we'll put that in there. And then we'll go to style. We'll set the color to white. We'll go into typography. We'll set this to say 23. Um, she wanted to use a different font for this. We're going to use this Vega font. 200 for the weight. Close that. We're going to go into the shadow. We're going to do 5. And 2, 2, this will kind of offset the shadow to the bottom right. Now we'll go into the next text. We'll change that text here. 
And then we'll go into settings under the style. Again, we'll set the color to white. We're going to do typography. This time we'll do 33. Font, the Vigo again. And then we can close that out. And we're going to do the shadow the exact same way. 522. Close that out. For the last one, it's going to say Jamaica. Go to style. In this one, we're going to set the color to Bethany's green. We'll close that. Typography. We're going to pick another font that Bethany likes. Squad of one. We'll make this really big, 330. Close that. Go back to the color. I wanted to make this a little bit transparent. Like that. And then we're going to go in the shadow, do the shadow the exact same way. 522. Two. Close that. And now for the blend mode on this, we're going to do luminosity. It's fun to play with the different ones to see the kind of effects. Now notice this hangs down a little bit as far as the word Jamaica. We're going to move it up some, but it's still going to look funny in here. But when we produce it in our update, you'll see that it looks correct. Also on this edge here, these are too close to the left. So let's go ahead and choose that section. And inside of here, we're going to unlink the padding. And for the left-hand side, let's set that to 20. That moves it in a little bit. And now we want to edit the position between here and here. This is a neat trick. So we're going to choose the Jamaica text. And then we're going to go in advance. And now we're going to use margin this time. We're going to unlink those. And one of the neat things you can do with margin is you can also give margins negative numbers. So this top margin up here, I'm going to say negative 30. And notice how it pulled it up there real nice like that. Now if I hit update and I come in here and I reload, you'll see that it fits in there really nicely. Destination is a little high up here, so I want to move it down a little bit. And that will move everything down just a tad. So we'll click on destination, advance. We'll unlink this, and for the top on this, we'll put 20. And then we'll hit Update. And then we'll come back in here and hit Reload. And it's a little much because this is starting to show at the bottom, so we're going to move this um, space, get a little bit of that space out of there, and a little bit of the space out of here. So I'll we'll come to um, Destinations. I'll come in here, and we'll do that same trick. We're going to go into Margins. Unlink that, and for the bottom margin now, I'm going to put minus 10. And notice how it pulled it up a little bit. And then for the Jamaica, where we had minus 30, let's try minus 40. And we'll do update, come back in here, reload, and it looks perfect now. So let's go ahead and view Bethany's website, and we'll see that. She has the header at the top, it's got a title here, some text here, and then it has these fancy little progress bars, and they're in two columns, so we're going to do an inner column to do that. And then we got a, button, a bunch of buttons across here that we're going to add those as well. So let's go ahead and work on that first section. So we'll come back over to our WordPress, and then we're going to scroll down, and we're going to pick to make a new section. And this section is going to be one column. Now we'll go over to our widgets. We'll put a header in there. Come back to the widgets. We'll put a text editor in there just below that. Go back to the widgets. I'm going to put an intersection just below that. And go back to the widgets and I'm scrolling down looking for what's called progress. And we're going to put a progress bar in the first one of those. And then once we build it, we'll make a bunch of copies and we'll copy them to either side. So we'll start by adding some style to the text header. We'll go to the content and choose center. And we'll set that to say introduction. And then we're going to go to style it. We're going to set the color to be Bethany's teal. And then we're going to set the typography to the fancy font that Bethany likes. Size of 50. Close that out. Now we'll edit this text. Paste in our content. Go to Style, and come into Typography. We'll use Default Font, but make it bigger. And we're going to use Black here. And now we're ready to edit our Progress Bar. So we'll click on that. And the top here is what goes right there, so we'll change that to say Accommodations. 
Then this sets the percentage of the bar, we'll say 80. And the inner text inside the bar is that text right there. Now we've got one of them completed, we're just going to make duplicates of these to make all six, and then we can change the content for those. So basically, I can come here, duplicate, 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 drag one of those over here, duplicate, duplicate. Now while I'm thinking about it, this text is a little too high up, so we're going to click on that text, go to advanced, unhook those, and then on the top of that, let's make that 30. That brings it down some, that looks a lot better. Okay, so now we have these that need new content, and we'll go ahead and use some magic to do that. So the progress bars are complete, but in Bethany's site, she didn't have the percentages on here, because these really aren't percentages, those are kind of just approval ratings. And so really we want to go back and change that. And so what we need to do is click on each one of these. So for example, we can click on the first progress bar, and under display percentage, we just put hide, just like that. Now we'll just quickly adjust the other five to do the exact same thing. And our progress bars are complete and we're ready to work on our next section. And for here we're going to add another intersection. So we're going to come back up to our widgets. And then we're just going to drag this intersection to here. And in Bethany's website it has the yellow coming up next. So let's go ahead and add this little bar in between our separator. So we'll come into here. We're going to choose that section. Go to Style, Shape Divider, we're going to do a bottom, and we're going to choose our Waves Brush, and our color is going to be Bethany's Yellow, close that out, and we'll put a height of 60. Now we can see that it's there, but it's a little bit close on here, and obviously it's going to change when we put the other stuff in there. But while we're in here, let's go ahead and go to here. And we'll unlink the padding, and let's try 60 in here. And now we're ready to start working on our button bar. So we're going to come back up to Widgets, and we're going to choose a button. We'll drag that in there. And we're not going to need this empty column, because we'll just copy the button column that we have to the left. So we'll right-click that and delete it. And now for our button, we'll just come over here and tell it to be centered. And we're ready to add the rest of our formatting for that button. From here, we'll click on Style. We'll set the background color for the button to Bethany's green. And then we're going to choose Hover and set the background color for the hover to Bethany's yellow. And now when we move over the button, we'll see that it highlights as we would want it to. So we're going to duplicate our button six times. Well, five, we need six. We'll right click there on the column, Duplicate, and we'll do that four more times. So now we have our six buttons. And we're ready to get our buttons to point somewhere. But first we need the sections that they're going to point to because this button's going to point to the next section. So let's go ahead and start the next section. And we're going to make this a single column. We'll go into Style. We're going to set the background for this section to Bethany's yellow. Now we're going to add some widgets to that. So we'll come in and put a title widget there and an editor widget under there, like so. And then we're going to start putting the content in for those two. And there's actually a subheading, so we're going to put another heading in here, like so. So we'll go to edit the first heading, style, and we're going to pick Bethany's fancy font, and we'll set the height to 50. And we'll go ahead and set the text to that to be places to stay. And under style, we'll set the color to be white. Now we're ready to do the bottom one here. Text will be that. Go into Style. We'll set this also to white. Close that. Typography. Default font. Let's try 30. And then for the text for the bottom section, just change that out. And now we're actually going to need another section of text below that because we're going to put numbers next to it and show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and go back up here to Widgets. We'll put another text editor down here. And for the one that we started with, let's go ahead and to Style, we'll set this to Black. Close that. Typography, default font, but let's go with 18 for the size. And then we'll do the same thing for the one down here. We'll go into Style, Color Black, Typography, 18. 
For this particular piece of content, we want to make this a numbered list. And to do that, to make this software work well, you want to have the individual pieces of content have a space between them. Now, I did this in a text editor to make it work well for me. And so in this case, I'm going to highlight the five different areas I have, copy that to the clipboard, and then I can come over here and I can paste it in. And when I scroll up, I'll notice there's an individual line between each one of those. If you don't have that individual line, when you apply the line numbers, it'll only give you one at the top. So now we can select all that, and I'm going to go click on line number. And if you notice, now there's nice line numbers next to them. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and put in the bottom wave separator. So let's come up to the section for that. We'll go to Style, and then we'll go to Shape Divider. This will be for the bottom. We're going to use our Waves brush, and we'll use Bethany's green for this, because that's going to be the next section below that. And we'll set this to 60. And now we scroll down, we can see that there's not enough space there. So again, come into Advanced, unlink those. And for the bottom, let's set this to 60. And now we've got plenty of space there. Now let's go ahead and visit Bethany's website again. And for the sake of time, notice that most of this is very similar to what we're already doing. The, the sections are changing colors and things like that. We have this special section here I'm going to show you how to do. But all the rest of this is very similar. And at the very bottom, there's also a photo gallery. I'm going to show you how to do that. But for the most part, that content is very similar. So I'm just going to do that behind the scenes. As a bonus for making it this far through the course, I'm about to show you everything you need to know about using Elementor templates. You have probably already figured out there's a duplicate version of this website, obviously because the site has the content for Bethany's already in it. So there also is a back end for that one. We're going to go into that back end, and here's the section for the places to stay that's completed. So in this section, I'm going to right click on this, and I want to save this as template. And I'm going to give it a template name that has the word original on it, so I know it came from the original site. Now I'll click on Save to make a copy of that. Now it's listed in our list of templates for this particular site, but I need to use it in the new one we're doing. So I'm going to come over here, this little icon, and I'm going to export it. And it comes up with this box, and I want to save it as a file. And now that's been downloaded to my computer. And if I go to my Downloads folder, You'll notice that it's listed, but it has a really funny name. And you definitely want to change these names, so I'm going to go ahead and rename that. And I'm going to rename it what I named it originally. That way, when I go to recycle it, it's going to make sense. Now we're ready to insert this version of the template into our version of the website. So let's go back to our Elementor. We need to save our updates that we were already working on. And now we're going to have to go back to the dashboard, because you have to import them from the dashboard. That's the only way you can get the new templates back into your site that are exported. So we're going to click on Elementor and it should just bring up your templates by default. If not, there's a My Templates option as well. And now from here we're going to import new templates. So we'll click on Import Templates, choose File, choose the template to import, and Import Now. And now you see it shows up in our list of templates that we can use. Now we can go back to Pages, so we'll click on Destinations Jamaica, Edit with Elementor. And now we're back to our Jamaica Destinations page. And before we can insert the new piece, we need to come down here and remove the old section that we had. So we'll remove that section. And now we're going to go to our folder here. And inside the folder, we'll be able to get to My Templates. Now before we insert our template, I want to tell you about blocks and pages. Blocks are basically sections that you can add into your website project. Now any of them that say Pro next to them mean if you want to access that, you pay a one-time fee to Elementor to have unlimited access to all their Pro versions, which gives you access to the really nice ones. If you scroll down, you'll see that there's really a lot of stuff here. It just keeps going on and on and on. It's just wonderful what they've done, and many of them are free. There's also a lot of Pro versions as well. We end up getting the Pro version to have access to all the additional ones because it really wasn't that expensive. Now under Pages, these are entire pages that are complete. So if you wanted to have an entire page that was done and used it a certain way, you could go in here and just click on it. And again, the ones that don't say Pro are free, and the ones that say Pro, you paid a one-time small fee to them, and you get access to all those unlimited. And then under My Templates are the ones that we've created or we've imported or we've saved. Now under this video, I've also have some content that shows you 
where you can find templates. For example, webyoda.com slash templates has all the templates that were in the different courses where we've used them. Also, Elementor is a partner with WebYoda, just like HostGator was a partner with WebYoda. So if you end up deciding you need the pro version, a portion of those proceeds go to help provide additional free training for training centers and students online all over the world who can't afford training. And finally, there's Template Monster, and this site has templates for lots of different environments as far as building websites. In particular, they have a really good collection of ones that are used for Elementor itself. So let's go ahead and go back to our WordPress, and notice that now this one's available because we added it to our library. And so I'm just going to click on Insert. I'm always going to choose No for this. And now it's added to the site, but notice it has all the content. So not only did I save us the trouble, but I saved me the trouble of having to write this whole thing in there a second time. Notice in our import that the text is now no longer black. This seems to be an import issue I'm sure Elementor will fix quickly, but in our case I just went back and set it to black in the page. Now suppose you don't want to just save one section. What if you wanted to save the whole page? Well the way you do that is down here, if you click on that little arrow, there's an option to save as template. And that would save the entire page as a template, and that allows you to import entire pages as templates. In fact, that's exactly what I did here. Once again, our import resulted in our black text becoming gray. Fortunately, Bethany provided me with a solution that we will apply later in this video. If you scroll down, you'll notice that now all the content is in the site, except for the small piece I'm going to show you how to do here and the photo gallery at the bottom. Now at the very top we had these buttons and now these buttons have names because we imported those. Now when you click on one of these buttons it shows a name here. Now notice that name has a pound sign in front of it and the pound sign is required and then next to it is whatever the name of the link. We're going to link to inside of a page so in this case it's going to be places to stay and each one of these has its own name, things to do. Now to get it to go to that place, we have to add a special widget. So let's go to our widgets and scroll to the bottom. And it's called a menu anchor. And we're going to drag that menu anchor just above the heading there. And then over here, we can paste in the name of our anchor, but we got to take off the pound sign. Now at this point, when we scroll down and we hit the places to stay button, it automatically jumps to that spot. Now it turns out that all the other ones we've already put into place. So you can see that one goes there, and if you go down to the budget, it goes straight to the budget section. So if we hit on update, and we go back to our website, and hit reload, now this will be the new version, and each of these buttons will work and go to particular areas. Now at this point, we're ready to go ahead and fill in those little sections that were left over from before. So let's go ahead and go back to our WordPress, and from here we're going to scroll down to the section that we want to work on, and we're going to work on this section right here. We're going to set this to stretch, full width, column gap, no gap. Next we're going to need some pictures to put in here. I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of this, because we're going to use it twice. And so now we're going to go back and get an image widget, put one in there. Scroll down, I'm going to do the same thing here, another image widget is going to go in there. Now we're going to choose an image for this one, we're going to upload one, and we're going to use Bethany's folder. And then we're going to take this one, I'll drag it in just like that, insert media, and now we're going to come over here and do this one. Same thing, we're going to add another file, and this time we're going to add that one, insert media. And now we just need to put the content in these two fields. And those are going to be the text editor widget. So we'll grab one of those for each one of those sections. We can go ahead and style these. We can set the color to white. We'll close that. Typography. We'll put 18 as the font size. And we'll do the same thing over here. Style, color, white. Close, Typography, 18. Now each one of these is also going to have a little header on it. So we'll go ahead and pick a header and drag one of those on each side. Now we can style the headers. So we'll go into Style. I'm going to set the color to white. And to do the other one the same way. Style, set the color to white. And we'll use the rest of the defaults. And now we just need to change out this content for these two sections. 
Now the content is now updated. We can hit update here, go back to our website, hit reload. And now we have that section complete, except look at this. These are really close on this one and this one's not really close. This is that column. And we're just gonna put 12 on here. I did it on that one, I forgot to do it on this one. We'll do update, come back over, reload. And now it fits there just fine. And we're ready to fill in our photo gallery. Let's go back to our WordPress. We'll scroll to the bottom. We're gonna put a photo gallery right here, a bunch of images. So we go to widgets, scrolling down, looking for image gallery. Drag that in. Now we want to add some images to it. So we're going to click on Add Images. We're going to go back to Bethany's folder. And then we're going to select all the images that we want to be in the gallery. Drag them over and let those load. Now those are loaded. We can click Create New Gallery. Now we'll click Insert Gallery. And we're just going to change our image size to 300 by 300. And that looks really nice and pretty. But if you wanted spacing between them, you can go to Style, Spacing, Custom, and then put however much spacing you want. Now I can do Update. Go back to our page, hit Reload. And now our photo gallery is complete and we're ready to solve the mystery of why the text is gray inside Elementor. Originally, I thought, wow, you know, the import's not working right, can't really figure it out. And I pointed it out to Bethany, I was a little frustrated. She goes, what are you talking about? All you need to do is set your color defaults. And I was like, color defaults? Well, that makes a lot of sense. So basically, we go back to our dashboard. And when you scroll up, here's this gray text. Well, she had her default color set. Now, if we come to this icon over here, we can go into default colors, choose text, hit black, hit apply, and all of a sudden it's exactly the way it's supposed to be. So we'll go back to our page, we'll hit refresh, and everything's right now. To get started on our gallery, let's first look at Bethany's gallery. So we'll go back to her site, we'll go to the top, we'll click on gallery, and you'll notice that the top is basically the same as our about us, so we can recycle that. And we're going to enter another image gallery, just like we had in the last one, but we're not going to put any spaces in between them. So let's go back to our WordPress. We need to go back to our dashboard. Choose Pages. Scroll down to our Gallery page. Choose that. Edit with Elementor. And we're ready to start creating this page. Now at the top of this page we want the About Us header, and I actually went to the trouble to go ahead and do that behind the scenes for us, so it's in my templates now. And there it is right there, so we're going to insert that, we'll click No, and there it is, it's already at the top of our page. Now we can just click on that text, and instead of saying About Us, change it to Gallery. And now we want to add a new section, so we're going to click on Section. We're going to put a gallery in there, so let's go in and put our image gallery. Choose that, drag the image gallery in there like so. We'll click on that, and we're ready to pick pictures for that, so add images. And from here, we're going to choose the images that were from our original carousel. But we don't need Bethany's profile picture in there, so that'll give us 24. We can say create gallery, insert gallery. Now we're going to set the image size to medium large, columns 3. Now we're going to go back in for that section and set the style. And we're going to set the background to Bethany's green, like so. And then at the top over here, we had a little text editor. So we're going to add one of those text editor guys right here. We're going to change out the text. Go back into style, color, white, close, typography, 18. We'll hit center. Now we need to add the waves brush to the bottom. So we'll choose this section and we'll scroll to the bottom. We'll go to advanced. Let's go ahead and unlink that and choose 80 as our bottom. Now we'll go into style, shape divider, bottom. Type equals waves brush, and the color is going to be Bethany black. 
and then we'll come down here and set this to 60 and we should be ready to go we can hit update go back to our website click on gallery and our gallery page is complete so as an added bonus, I wanted to show you a fancy gallery that Bethany put in another one of her websites, self-tastic.com, since we didn't utilize the fancy gallery in this website. Now as you scroll down this photo gallery, you see it's quite impressive how the images flow in together. I just like this a lot and I thought I would share it with you. And if you're interested in building this particular one, it's in another video of mine. So if you're interested in adding this fancy photo gallery to your website, simply go to our affiliate marketing video. And then in the timestamps, look for Fancy Gallery. Or you can click on the link at the top right. Now we're ready to go on to the Travel Tips page and start that one. With all the resources we've already created, the Travel Tips page is going to be really straightforward. So let's go to Bethany's website and let's look at her Travel Tips page. And notice it has the same header as the About Us. It has these accordion sections that we saved one of those, and all we're basically doing is making a whole bunch of those and changing out the content. And at the bottom, it has the carousel just above the footer. So since we've already done all these things, I'm just going to go ahead and insert the travel tip page because I'm pretty sure you already figured out how that piece is going to work, and we're ready to move forward to the Contact Us page. Let's visit Bethany's Contact Us page, and we'll see that again it has the same header at the top as we had for the About Us. It has a little section here where it's got two columns. And down here it also has two columns. We're going to be putting in a new form. We already made the back end for that. And we'll be adding a map. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll head back to our WordPress. And from here we need to go back to the dashboard. We'll click on Pages. We'll click on Contact Us. Elementor. And we're ready to get started on our Contact Us page. From here we're going to click on the folder. Go to My Templates. And we're going to insert the About Us header. Click No. And then basically we just need to change this out to say Contact Us. Next we're going to add another section. We'll make that two columns. And we're going to do the same thing again. And then for this first section we're going to set the color to Bethany's green. Close that. And then we'll come to this section. We'll go into Style for that one. Set the background to Bethany's yellow. We'll close that. Now inside the first section we're going to go into Advanced. We'll unhook that. We'll put a top margin of 20, a bottom of 60. And then we're going to go into Style, Shape Divider, and we're going to put our wave at the bottom. And we're going to choose the color of Bethany's yellow. Close that. Set 60. And now we'll basically do the same thing to the bottom section. So we'll go there, Advanced, Unlink, Set 20 bottom to 60. We'll go into style, set the shape divider to bottom, waves brush, and the color for this will be the footer black so it's not all the way black. We'll close that and we'll set the height of that to 60. And now all we need to do is put the content in those two sections. So we're going to come back into the widgets and we're going to pick a header and put it in there like that. We're going to go to style, we're going to set the color to white, Close that. Typography. We're going to pick Robo Slab. And we'll set the size to 26. Now we'll go back over to Content. And we'll put in the content for the first one, which will be phone email. And now we'll come over here. We'll right click. We'll make a duplicate. Drag it down there. And we'll make another duplicate. Drag it over there. And another duplicate. Drag it down there. And now the content is updated and we're ready to add a little icon list under each of these two. So go back into our widgets and we'll choose this icon list. We're going to put it there. We'll go ahead and format this list. Now we're only going to need two of them here. Spacing between, if you add something here, it just spreads these apart a little bit. Under icon, we're going to set the color of our icon to black. Close that. And then we're going to set the size of our icon, let's say to 18, make it a little bit bigger. We'll go into text. We're going to set the color of that to black. And then we'll just use the rest of the defaults. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to duplicate this because we're going to use another one on the other side that's very similar. And now we want to make adjustments to the content itself. And to do that, we'll select the widget. 
And over here, when you click on it, it'll do a pull down. You can set the text that's going to be over here to the right, and then you can choose an icon. So, for example, we want it to be phone. So we can click down here, and that'll open up the second one. You can put the title for that one that shows up over here. And then we can pick the icon we want it to be. And now we're ready to work on the one on the right hand side. So we'll choose that one. First item. Heading for that will be that. And then we're going to choose the icon. And for the second one, we don't need an icon, so we're just going to click this X box to get rid of it altogether. And then for the list title item 2, we'll put the second part of the address. Now notice this is inset here, and we really want it to line up over here. But the problem is, if you come here and you add spacing before this, regular spaces won't do anything. So we have to use a different trick to make it work. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, right-click, and we're going to make a duplicate. And then in the first one, we're going to delete the second line. And in the second one, we're going to delete the first line. And now in the second one, we can come up to Advanced, and we can unlink this and, let's say, pick... 23 and that'll line up and then we just have to adjust the spacing between these two and we can move that up using our little trick here so on the top let's try minus 15 and that looks about right now we're ready to add our message box so we'll go back to our widgets and at the very bottom is our void contact form 7 we'll add that in right there and then we'll come up and choose our contact us form and we're ready to do some styling on that so we'll click on styling in our first box we're going to put color black and that changes the color of that text in our all input CSS box we're going to put this which is going to change this box to white and allow black text inside of it and then in the text area CSS we're going to put the same thing which will allow that box to be white and allow black text inside of it and everything else should be fine so for our final section, we need to add a map. So we're going to go back to our widgets, choose Google Maps, drag that over there like that. And then over here, we paste in whatever the address is. I'm going to leave the zoom at the default. And then we're going to set a height, and this height is going to be based on how tall we need it to be to fill that window. And once you get it exactly right, you're ready to hit Update. We'll go back to the site. Hit Contact Us. And now we have a fully functional Contact Us page that's ready to go. So at this point, our website's pretty much complete. But if you look at Bethany's website on the home page, there was some animation that we want to show you how to do as well. So we'll click on the Home button. And now when we scroll down, notice how this content kind of scrolls in like that. And then we come down, and that swooshes in, and that swooshes in. We're going to look real quick at how we do that. And then after that, we're going to look at how to get this text to come in like that. So let's go ahead and head back to our WordPress. And we're going to add animation to our home page. We need to go back to the dashboard. Go to Pages. Scroll down. Choose Home. Edit with Elementor. Scroll down, and we want to animate this first section. Content animation is one of those super complicated looking things that's super easy to do. So for example, to add animation to this section, we're going to click on Bethany. We'll go to Advanced, and there's Entrance Animation. From here, we can do the pull down, and we can say Zoom In. And we can pick the header here, Advanced, Entrance Animation. So let's do Fade Down. We can choose the next header, Advanced, Animation, Fade from the left. And then this piece of content here, Advanced, Animation. We'll do zoom in again. Now this is complete for that section. Hit update. Go back to our website. Hit the home button. And we scroll down and now that all animates. Now scroll down to the next section and we're going to apply animation to the columns. It works the same way. For the left column here, I can choose that. Go to advance. I can say animate in from the left. From the column in the middle, I can go to advanced animation in from say the top I can choose the third one advanced animation from the right now we can click on update and go back to our site scroll down and watch as that animates in and we scroll down to the next section and that animates in and I went ahead and applied the animation to the rest of the sections 
Let's go back to Bethany's site to look at the final animation effect we want to be able to accomplish. So we're going to click on Home Page. And notice how this text is flying in and it changes over time. Now this actually is a pro feature and there's lots of amazing pro features. I just didn't cover those because I promise you can make this site and it will cost to you. And I'm going to show you how you can put this text in where it doesn't fly in for free. But if you want to have this fancy fly in thing, it's going to be the pro feature. It's not really expensive. Go.elementor.com front slash WebYoda gets you to the partnership and gets you a discount and gets you these amazing pro features. But let's go back to our home page and add this to our site. And from here we can scroll to the top and let's do the free version first. If we click in here, we can choose the header, we can drag it in there, you can put whatever text you want, you can center it, you can go in and style it. We'll say we want it to be white and let's say we want it to be the permanent marker font and then we'll make this let's say 70 and then let's say you want it to be a little bit transparent you can come back in there and so now you have a version of this that is free now if you want to animate this we got to do it a different way so we're going to have to delete that one we're going to click on our widgets icon again and I've added the pro version down here so that we can have access to this animated headline and I'm just going to drag that in right there but let's see what that animated headline looks like and I want you to just see a short piece about what you can do with just this look it's an underline thing going on here make this text come in like this make this text rotate like this make this text highlight like this so all of these things is just one particular pro feature and this particular one's the one we're going to use. Let's edit our animated header so we'll click on it and choose it. For style we're going to pick rotating. For animation we'll choose drop in and we'll put some text in and each of these lines are going to rotate through over here. Now notice the before text that shows up here, the after would show up after it. But If you don't give any at all then it's just going to rotate the text that's being animated. Now we can go to style and we can set typography and let's set this to 80. We'll come back out of that and then we're going to set it specifically for the animated. We'll come in here, we'll set it to white and we'll make it a little bit transparent. We'll close that. We'll come into typography down here. We'll choose the font permanent marker. And now we have this text rotating, but notice it's shifted to the right. Now if we update that and we go back to our website and reload and scroll up, you'll notice that it's not shifted to the right, so it worked the way we wanted it to. Now let's go back to Elementor. Now notice as these lines of text come in, there's no delay in between each line of text. If you want a delay, you come back to Content and just put an extra space between each of the lines of text. So basically it's displaying empty text in every other space. So we can hit update, go back to our site, hit reload, and now we have that extra space in between. Now the last thing we want to do is to make this look perfect in all browsers and all mobile devices and all tablets and things like that. For the most part, the responsive aspects of the website will be handled by the Elementor environment as well as the theme we installed, but there may be a few exceptions where we want to take control. Let's go back to our website and see a few examples. At the very bottom down here, you can choose this icon and it'll choose to see the different website options, so we're going to look at it in mobile mode. Now notice this text that's scrolling in the top really may not look good on a device that's mobile, so we can choose that particular item, go to Advanced, and at the very bottom of that, there's a responsive choice. And we can tell it just to hide that particular item. And you can hide any items you want. Another particular thing you may want to be able to do is if you scroll down, let's say you don't like how close this text is on the left and the right. Well, I can come in here, select that particular section, go to Advanced. And then I can say I want the left to be 20 and the right to be 20. And now that's spaced it. Now notice that's only on the mobile device. And that's what it looked like on a tablet, and that's what it looks like on our main computer. So that gives us complete flexibility. Now that was just a small sample of the type minor adjustments you can make to ensure your site is mobile friendly and other device friendly. 
but feel free to use those exact same techniques throughout your entire website to get everything looking perfect on every possible device. So we've reached the end of creating the website. I hope you've enjoyed taking the course. I know I've enjoyed being your guide and your instructor. But as promised, I had four really key things that I wanted to add at the end of this video that'll help your website show up in the search engines better. The first tip is that inside of WordPress, there's a place that specifically discourages search engines from indexing your site. Once your website's live, you don't want it to be discouraged from being indexed. So let's fix that. So we're going to go back to Elementor. Exit to the dashboard. And then we're going to look for settings. And under settings, we're going to reading. And this may or may not be set, depending on when and how yours was done. And look at that. Search engine visibility, discourage search engines from indexing this site. I definitely want to turn that off and hit save changes. Tip number two. There is an amazing plugin out there called Yoast. Every website that ranks higher than yours probably has Yoast. Also, free. So we're going to go to plugins. We're going to add a new plugin. And over here, type in Yoast. Five million active installations. Tells you something. So let's go ahead and install it. Let's activate it. Now you have the most powerful plugin for doing SEO available. Tip number three, secure pages. Google likes websites that have a lock. Google likes websites that are mobile friendly. So if we can do both of those things, we're going to ensure that our website's liked better. So if you click on the link at the top right, it'll take you to a YouTube video that explains exactly how to activate your secure key inside your WordPress website. Tip number four, you want to make sure the search engine think the value of your website is stronger than any of your competitions. Obviously having a lot of great graphics and great content in your website makes a difference. Having a really good look and feel like this website makes a difference. However, one of the number one things that improve your search engine results is by having other websites point to you. If somebody else's website has a link to you, that's called a backlink. The more backlinks you have, the more important your website seems to Google. The more backlinks the people who point to you have, the more important they seem, which also means the more important you are. Now, it seems like a lot of work. But if you go to jose1.com, these guys will teach you everything you need to know about backlinks. That's basically all they do. And if you look at it, Jose1 SEO literally is their middle name, so they know what they're doing. Now under SEO solutions, it shows you the basics, the terminology, and the details. They'll teach you everything you need to know as far as making your own backlinks, how it works, how to make the system work for you. And if you decide you don't want to put the time in to build them yourself, you can also contact them. So if you decide to use Jose One Services, be sure to mention the promo code WebYoda, and that'll save you 50% off your first month with a 100% guarantee on that first month. If you don't like it, you get your money back. So that about wraps it up. You should now have all the tools and skills needed to build your own professional WordPress website. I hope you've enjoyed the course. I certainly have enjoyed being your instructor. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the video below to help me spread the word to as many aspiring web designers as possible. Again, my name's Yoda. It's been a pleasure being your instructor today. I look forward to hearing from you below, but until then, have a great day. Peace out. You're still here? It's over. Go home.